Buying a vehicle right now is tough. Yeah, it's uh, hard. The inventory is non-existent. And here's what you need to do. You need to know a guy, right? Yeah. And we know two guys that can help you. We do indeed. From our uh, connection, they will make sure you're taken care of, especially if you let them know you're a Tom and Dan listener, you're a BDM. They will help you out. That's J.C. Harrelson over at Don Mealy Chevrolet. If you're looking for any Chevrolet, Corvette, anything in that brand. And Mike Stacks at Sport Subaru, Sport Mitsubishi right there in West Colonial Drive in front of the fairgrounds. Yeah, we've been working with these guys for a very long time. And like Tom said, you need a leg up. And when you tell them and you have to tell them that you are a BDM member, they will take excellent care of you. So again, if you want a Mitsubishi or Subaru, you got Mike Stacks on that side of things. And uh, and J.C. Harrelson has been working, uh, dealing with Corvettes and awesome Chevy trucks for a very long time. And the great thing about both these dealerships is they're not going to sell you a car above MSRP. And uh, basically, I was told um, by our guys that that's happening around it Florida is. because dealerships can do that because it's so hard to get a vehicle, but they will not do that, and Don Mealy said he won't, and uh, and if you talk to J.C. Harrelson, he'll help you find a, car, a vehicle, whatever you want, Indeed, and also Mike Stacks, and they are the people you need to see. Again, it's Sport Subaru, Sport Mitsubishi right there on West Colonial Drive, and Don Mealy Chevrolet in Claremont. Welcome to A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I am Dan. Samantha, our producer's here. Hello, Samantha. Hello. How are you? I'm okay. What's new? You Tom, know. Tom just, just got a scam call. Busy month. Busy month. Yeah, it Every is a, call is a scam call. Yeah, I never picked Why up. do we even have phones anymore? Can I turn off the phone part of my phone and just get text and internets? I'm, I wish. I think you can basically through some... I'm, I'm sure there's apps out there. Yeah, you can get apps like, to just text and call. Yeah. Well, no, call I, I want to. Like, I want to use my iPhone. Yeah. Through AT and T, and I want because that's who I have, and I want AT and T to say, okay, yeah. So since you only get scam calls, we disable will allow. Lo- no, disable calls in. I can call out. Yeah, I, I think if you I can. need nine one one, I can call out. I can call you guys. Can't you do that for or, like protecting I, your kids? Like, I want no calls in. Absolutely or maybe not. Set the call like you can get a call from your wife, me. Sam. Yeah, like, so I already numbers. have that. Okay. I already have you guys on. Like for instance, if the something were happening with the studio or something, I have Sam and you and my wife as the only ones that like. If I have notifications off, mm-hmm. you guys will power through. But everybody else is turned off. I, d- I just don't answer my phone I at all either. anymore. And then most of the time it's a mm, scam alert anyway. Yeah, and then any call that uh, like if it's a advertiser or but that's client, how we win, right? We shut our phones off and we make our phones so they're only us, right? We can use our phones to call each other. If we turn that feature on. And yeah. then that other person has to opt in to take your phone calls. You see what I'm saying? We're going to have to police our phones a little more. You know, the- so if I'm if I turn my phone on so it's able to call Tom, he has to have his phone set to take calls from me. Because if his phone ain't set for phone calls from me, let's just make it so he can't get any. You know who's ruining this for everybody? Dumb old people. Um, because yeah. old people will answer their cell phone no matter what. And I and no, Hello? Even, even if you tell it them. It might be my grandson. <laughs> Let me get it. It's, it's all not your a grandson. Scam. Your grandson's dead. <laughs> it's that scam likely right on the screen. It's all. Never this answer your phone. This no, scam likely. And then they answer and they're like, hello? Hello? And they're screaming. And then it's uh, like, like some Indian call center with chaos going on. They're talking. And then it's the same thing. They're like, I can't. I can't understand it. My pop-up used okay. to do it. Not that he was dumb. He just, he was from a different time. Follow and then me. He was like, why are these people calling me? And then I'm like, pop-up, it's all a scam. Never answer your home phone. Never. And he still does it. To beat them, <laughs> you got to become them. What if you and I and Sam, if we just applied a little good old Florida ingenuity to this, we could make these scammers be better scammers. So for instance... We go to this lady. We say, guys, this, you got it all wrong. First thing we got to do is we need to get you a quiet space. You can't be doing these scam calls with other Indian people screaming over top of you. This is all by design. It's wrong. We need to get you guys to, like, work on your American accents a little bit more. You know? like we gotta, That connection was bad. If too. we whip that up, I mean, what if we just started playing the game and started scamming people? <laughs> um... You don't seem why interested. you don't seem interested. It is illegal. It is. Yeah, yeah. But the, no, I'm just saying it's not illegal to give them help. No, I'm, not a, good, I'm help. a good person. We're going to give them help. We'll take a little cut. Um, what could they be getting? Again, it's like they, credit they, card they, number. They, they, All you need is one old lady's credit card number. Have you ever charged 
like multiple amounts of just stuff that like have you ever stolen and used somebody's stolen credit card? No. It's oh, pretty, pretty awesome. That, wouldn't it be it's easier awesome. just like if, if it was it's all endless. about credit card numbers, it, it, wouldn't it be easier just to find a employee to, that works for another legit call center that gets credit card numbers all day long and then have that employee just write down all these credit card numbers and... Yeah, but then they're implicated then, into this scam too. Or like, just buy it from... Well, they, it seems like... There's just a more efficient way to get credit card numbers, right? Uh, and then there's only so much you could do with credit card numbers. And then after, you, like, you know, you use it a couple times. And nowadays, like, you get alerted. You, someone's using your credit card. And then you just, you know, you They say, also sell information to other companies, mm-hmm, whether it be yeah. your credit card, your address, your phone number, your social security number. They, they ask people social well, that's security how, numbers. That's how they get your targeted ads, right? I mean, that's where everything's going is like hyper targeted ads, our data being sold by corporations, including Facebook and anything else that we are a part of where our data is getting collected and then sold off to bigger uh, companies that will then continue to sell it, right? Yeah, I mean, it's all about data uh, collection and uh, information. And, and I mean, me and Daniel got our tax returns, uh, like, basically submitted under our name falsely that happens last a lot. year. Um, and it really didn't do it. And, like, Bernie's like, oh, okay, As I'll long as you it. catch it, yeah. And now, then, there were some commercials but, that I hear when I'm listening to the Jim Colbert show. Where they'll run an ad uh, for uh, it's pretty funny too because it's um, oh what's a uh, what's the guy's name he has a weird name politician uh, Mint not Mint Romney the other guy like a, a weird name guy and he's like uh, title loan thieves uh, it, it, proving that you own your house the only way you can do that is through a, t- a title and thieves are going online and stealing your title and then they're saying like basically scaring old people into thinking that if you don't have a paper or digital title to your home. That if other people can go online, act as if they're you, get a title to your home, and then they will trick people into to owning your or thinking that they own your house or taking out, I guess, like credit cards using the house as collateral or loans or, or, loans or whatever. Mm. But like it's a thing that they talk about. I just wanted to see how much is it really a thing or is it just as just enough a thing to make a company that can now advertise on radio to get money. You see what I'm saying? Oh, because that's a scare well, tactic too. Fear sells. You Correct. Know, like, I, I, even with the lo- Newt Gingrich, that's who it is. It's Newt Gingrich. Newt. Yeah, it's old Newt, and he's on there, and he's like, you know, he, he's into gold, and he's into like, hey, if you don't have your title for your home, thieves can get online and they can steal your title, yeah, and then yeah, now they yeah. own your house. That, I think that's all fear. Like when I hear that commercial, yeah, yeah. I go, why are you running this? <laughs> this is like scaring old people into thinking that there are these cyber criminals stealing their homes, and I don't think that's a thing. I really yeah. believe it's not a thing. Well, I could be wrong, but I think it's not a thing. Even the life lock and a lot of those things where, you know, a lot of it's just fear tactics of like, you know, getting people to pay life lock. Now they do they do provide a service that helps protect you if someone steals your identity. But then like. How often is someone stealing your identity? To what extent? How uh, it was pretty statistically good for likely? Mine. Like my mom you know. got me LifeLock. It was like one of the last things she purchased to me before she passed away. Yeah, and then I had my identity assumed, and they did. Like, remember the Best Buy thing? They opened two Best Buy credit cards. Yeah, yeah. And it did. It, I will say that it didn't provide anything that I couldn't have already done by myself, but it did make it easier. It did make it so I could just hit a button, and it was like, oh, okay, we've locked your accounts now. And, yeah, yeah, and we'll take care of this. So it, it is a, it's an assist. It's yeah, but you, can, I mean, how you much, don't need it. How much money is it compared to you like, how that. often it happens? And then it's like nowadays, like every charge that we spend, I get a text message like you spent this. Like so, our business card. Every time someone spends a dollar on it, it I get a text message. And, oh, oh, and then it says like this: you spent this much money. And sometimes I don't recognize it, and then I'll, I'll You're like a breva. I didn't buy. It. I'll, yeah. I'll, what is that? Oh, uh, who did that? I'll text Tony. I'm like, did you spend this much? money in some uh, Chinese website? Are you like, yes, I did. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so, like, what if some absurd charge came through and we found out it's not ours, then i just dispute it, and then the credit card company would investigate it, refund me, you know. Every time my card has been stolen, I always dispute it, and then they give me a refund. Yeah, but older, a lot of wow. older people either don't have smartphones, don't have the notifications on, you know, mm. don't check their mail yeah. quite as often, you know, Slippery like things slope, get right? piled yeah. up. Well, that's and, the problem. It all yeah. comes back to dumb oh, old no, 100%. people. Oh, no, 100%. Once the boomers man. are gone. Everything is 
dumb old man. It all yeah, comes yeah. back to dumb old man. Oh, one day I'll be the dumbest old man. You're getting there. Yeah. You'll see. <laughs> You'll see. Uh, I'll be I, ruining for everybody. Hey, not if I get Calling there first. Our financial advisor. <laughs> not if I get there first. <laughs> Who's 45 wearing overalls? I ah, got a leg up on you, buddy. Um, voicemails. Right. Let's do some. Here we go. Hey, gang. It's Zach from Ohio. I was at a party when I was 17, and when the party was winding down, it's probably 2 or 3 in the morning, I was going to go to sleep. I was going to find a place on the couch and go to sleep, but I walked outside to smoke a cigarette, and I was finishing my beer, and I saw my good friend, uh, Tim, asleep outside in the snow. He just completely passed out. It's like a lost consciousness. And he would have died if I would not brought him inside. Y'all ever saved somebody's life before in some stupid way? I'd like to think that I save a lot of lives every day in a stupid way. <laughs> I'd like to think that just me being here is enough comfort for the people in Orlando and the surrounding areas to know that I care about them and that just me trying to act a little stupid for a couple hours a day saves their life in some way. That's what I'd like to think. Now, it's not true, but I'd like to think it. I think, didn't we do a show about saving people's we lives did. and stuff? Um, and Now, I do know like, that he was a member of this station for many, many years, that Bubba whoop Wilson saved a black family from a ravine. Oh, yeah, he well, pulled yeah, yeah. them out of a station wagon. <laughs> now, that's the only one I know in recent history. So, let's, let, let's break this down. So, Zach, his buddy was passed out in the snow, right? Mm-hmm. He would have, would he uh, have died out there or would he walk out? Yeah! I don't think, I don't think he would If you black out drunk, you might not wake up. And because your uh, body would slow down hypothermia, yeah. and then you die uh, like that. I don't but think he would have died. I think depends Zach, how cold it was. Too. Well, it snow. What was so, he wearing? Yeah, but I mean, Zach, was he face down? <laughs> like go I out. need to know that. Was he face down, ass up? That's the way <laughs> I like to die. <laughs> oh. yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, it's hard <laughs> I, to say. I you didn't would, even attempt to rhyme it. It's hard to say he 100 percent would have died if you hadn't brought him inside. You know what I'm saying? Because there's there is a I, I'm gonna say 40. To a 45% chance he wakes up and then comes inside. I've been hanging out with you too much because all of this is making sense. <laughs> like, everything he's right. saying, I agree with. So you, yeah. like, you oh, may great. have, you yeah. may have you saved You got two of them life, now. Damn it. If you claim to save someone's life, like, I want you to dive down and you're, yes. and you're breaking the windshield, you're pulling them out yeah. of the car. Like, like what Bubba did. I need some, <laughs> I need some body the, carrying. I need some under the, I need that move where you firemen carry them, you drag them. Like, like I think we did a show on this and did we not, did. I don't and, think that And then Zach, they jumped in the water and saved the lady from the she was having a seizure yes. in her car like that's saving a life Zach right? Zach is a sweet man he checks on me a lot and he's a good boy like he'll message me he'll be like hey you doing good I, you sound a little weird I'll be like no I'm good man thank you and I care about him but I will say that I don't think you're saving someone's life by just going over to your drunk friend and be like, hey, wake up. And then you get him inside. I, I got I to gotta go with Tom on this. I don't think you saved a life that day. I'm with you, Zach. Now, yeah, there, there could have been a chance he uh, died. But uh, now, if you. Well, want- there's a chance I could die right now. Oh, there yeah. it is. You know, I mean, I mean there's probably tons of times where you've actually saved someone's life in the fact of, like, not letting someone drive drunk. And then, you know, they. Uh, they could have gotten a car accident, and a lot of people have done that, right? Or a lot of people, um, you know, may have. Uh, you ever called someone a cab? Cab? Well, an Uber, <laughs> oh cab, God. yeah, same sort of thing. <laughs> no, no, um, I, I, because like that. Ever, age, you've let people stay at your house that are too inebriated. I've done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is I that mean, saving a life? Again, it's it kind of like be. a Zach, could be. like a Zach saving a life. Or like yeah, he could have died drive. if he drank and drove at this time, but maybe he gets home. You know, most likely he does. Uh, like you, I never. If I have a listener a write me and say that they are contemplating suicide, and if I write back to them and engage in a way to try and de-escalate. Is that, you know, how serious I, I were they? I would have no way of knowing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've yeah. done it before multiple times, yeah, but yeah. I would have no way of knowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No way to know. Um, mm-hmm. but I hope. I hope, right? You don't want anybody offing themselves. How often do people actually directly save someone's life 100%? It's probably... Mostly just in- that insanely crossing rare. Guard. <laughs> yeah, 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 insanely rare. That right? crossing guard last week, that car was hauling ass through the... And he, he ran and he just, like, 
Goldberged all the kids across, and he got them <laughs> oh, all. I didn't saved see that. Them. Oh man, yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's what I want. When you're saving a now, life, I not, want that. Maybe not all the kids would have died. It was in serious yeah, you know no, no, like no, how many? Maybe of them none were, of them would have died. Yeah, yeah. Right? Maybe right. they. But just it would have hurt. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you see, like, there's like. Uh, there's TikTok videos of people like there's a train one. I don't believe anything on TikTok yeah, yeah, anymore. Yeah, it's, it's I got, that place is a hell. Right, you're just one person now. Mm, well, no, but it's all. Have you seen, some of the things I see? I'm on also TikTok, not on y'all's algorithm. You guys see some weird stuff. Uh, mine, I only, I've lost. I've given up on my algorithm. Mine is it, it'll get good for like a day where I'm like, oh, educational video, hype invention. Um, a uh, meditative, uh, cool thing to watch. Oh, that's neat. a pattern. That's great. And then it'll be right back to mounds. <laughs> it's like uh, that is so it's weird. like we stopped on mound a I, little too a little long. too long. Yeah. yeah, and then I got you. here's the thing. I can only be who I am. Yeah, yeah. it is impossible for me if a mound is uh, offered. Mm-hmm. I believe it would be rude of me to not you know, win in Rome. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's play another voice. Right. <laughs> uh, have you ever saved a life, Samantha? I don't think. I'm trying to remember. I I do not believe that I have ever uh, saved a life. It's a it's a rare thing. I feel right? like if I would have, I'd remember it, right? And I've Otherwise, listened to that song, "How to Save a Life." I've listened to that song yeah. a million times. Never had to do it. No. <laughs> don't remember the song. I'm sure indirectly, though, everybody has. And like, and if you would have played that uh, the alternative timeline, like that person oh, could have yeah. died. You know what I'm saying? Like, I uh, like to think of myself saving you and your potential employees that would have been under you at the Power Sports Store from uh, shutting down during COVID. <laughs> you and your team at uh, Volusia County Power Sports. Would have had to shut the whole shop down. You would have fired everybody nah, and nah. killed your dream. The power sports. You'd be left with one <laughs> side by side. <laughs> <laughs> that, that business did not change. They didn't shut down. <laughs> yeah, they're fine. There you go. Uh, let's try this one. Hey, Tom and Dan. Just sat through a meeting at work about words that are acceptable to use in the office and not acceptable to use in the office. And the term white trash was brought up as being racist and it was explained that yeah of course it's racist it's white trash just like black trash is racist because you're taking the color of the race and slapping it on what you're saying (laughs) how is that not i'm not saying that you're i I know you say trailer trash i know where you just don't say a color yeah i know what you're gonna say but i'm just going on the definition white trash sure that's racist because it's white black trash brown trash it's that's it's by definition racist, but acceptable in our community. Yeah. <laughs> like I was saying, <laughs> yeah. seriously, I'm okay when you with call that, someone yeah. white trash, no one cares. Yeah. You say black trash, be like, ooh. Yeah. You, know, but if you, you know what? But I wouldn't say like that. A, if you were a black person and you said, well, they're just black trash, I'd be like, that's your right. <laughs> That's what I would say, right? But, well, I'd be like, hey, but you're like, whoa, 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 buddy! <laughs> like, we say, we say white trash. Any other think, color is I'm not. Saying, I, I don't do think it. I would shut it down. It's it's if illogical, somebody, but uh, yeah. that's that's where we stand. He sounds right? angry than not being able to say it, though, <laughs> maybe a little bit. It's, just, it's racist because uh, it infers that you're basically, if you're white, you're above everybody else. But if you're white trash, you're oh, white, take. but you are denigrated to every other color of skin that's out there in the world. I have never thought that. I have never thought that not by either, saying white trash, you're taking white and putting it on the same level as everybody else. Isn't that just by design? That's no. all screwed up. No, no, it, but it just means you're a trashy person. Everybody knows yeah. what the, the intent by saying someone's white trash, right? Uh, yeah. So it's like it's really like a poverty thing, right? Well, uh, I think it ta- you take with, the. It's like you take the stereotype and apply it towards the. The uh, the the group, right? So, like, white trash to me. I can name you a bunch of things that are white trash. I'm sure it's all, every it's group. All, it's also, like, synonymous with, like, uh, redneck. Yes. Or, you know, it's like trash. It's trailer yeah. trash. All of it. It's all yeah. kind of the same. Yeah, you're right, though. It is, like, mostly a poverty thing. But, yeah. then, but then it doesn't sure. really have to be because you could be a trashy person. Yes. Uh, you could be a rich white trash. I, Absolutely, like, yeah. There's 100% a lot of rich white trash out there. I would agree it with that. It is an odd term to pin down. So, it's it's. I've always looked at it's it. It's not Facebook legal right you can't no, use it on can't. facebook no the, the, huh. the term trash uh, i love the term garbage and trash those I, are my favorite things to describe things like i'll tell my wife i'll be like that is straight garbage it, 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 
love saying that. It just it implies something about your personality, right? It has nothing to do with anything else. It's just really. like the opposite of like classy, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it just means that uh, maybe you're not respectful, or you're rude, or you're uh, you don't hold yourself at a, in a certain uh, you know uh, way that you come across like. Trashy. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, so really that could be attributed to any race, but the only term that's acceptable nowadays is white trash, and that will soon be unacceptable. Yeah, it's, right? it's, Which it's, I'm yeah. sure it's getting to that point. And, and the, the whole point Let's being. expand our vocabulary. Yeah. It doesn't man. matter if you're a trashy person. Just say trash. Yeah, that's you it. just say yeah. trash. It's just easier. You know, yeah. like you're just making it easier for me. You yeah. are trash, you're trash, you're trash, you're trash. Blanket trash. Didn't yeah. have to say no. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And if, if everybody just got to that point, then you know then you're taking race out of it and then that's the whole point of trying to eliminate racism because you're just going to the human i thought for a split and it has second nothing he was to gonna... do with the person uh, the, right. the race of the person yeah. for a split second i thought he was going to be like well what look, look, and i'm like you you got to understand white black brown i mean that's there's the, a color associated yeah, with it yeah because that's on there that's what it's pretty simple stuff but again, no one cares no. right now. <laughs> you know, but a corporate like your corporate America does because they have to have the rules. Well, there are certain yeah. white people yeah. that won't get offended, especially like if you say cracker, like why couldn't they call me a cracker? It's like it's just it's dumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah, being well, offended for no reason. Do yeah. you, either of but, you know why without looking it up and in the chat room without looking it up? Do either of you know why cracker barrel is called cracker barrel and what it is in reference to? No. Okay. Um, I'll guess. Okay. So I'm guessing that maybe like uh, when we were uh, forging west in old olden days, like he Oregon knows. Trail, he knows. that um, you know you have uh, your chuck wagon, which is like the, where all your food is stored mm-hmm. and stuff and like you mm-hmm. know. And then that's and then this is all from Yellowstone, isn't it? Uh, no, no, no. Pay attention. <laughs> pay attention. He about to dutton your ass. I have no, no. I have no idea. Pay I'm attention. Guessing, I'm guessing. Teach me this. how to dutton. You. And I don't. Let's do that song. Teach me how to you, nothing. You can do it. Teach me how to. I'll oh, have a cowboy hat. Teach me yeah. how to nothing. And then Put that on TikTok on the chuck wagon. It would, it would probably it be probably would hit, yeah. Let's just do it as okay. a as a test. There was a because he, obviously you didn't have like fresh baked bread, so all the bread you know. He's stale. looked this up before. Look at how long. I'm this making it up. Yeah, I'm making he ain't it up. making nothing up. This this I'm, MF is he read this I'm one day high logic. as hell no, at Cracker Barrel. Now you got read anything? <laughs> like, That's know. true. I am just using logic to figure this out, and then iPhone audio book. Origin, uh, Cracker Barrel, go. On the uh, chuck wagon, there's a barrel that you kept bread in or crackers. and He's hence, right. Cracker Barrel. 100%. Uh, yep, they'd put their crackers. Well, normally, it was more at general stores. They'd put all the crack soda crackers in one barrel for you to go and take your crackers out. And uh, But yeah, he's absolutely correct. Welcome back to a corporate time. What do you guys want to talk about? All right, let's do some <laughs> mail on mail. Let's right. uh, let's just jump into it because we do get a, a decent amount of voicemail messages, and uh, and we can't get to all of them, but we're gonna try. We're gonna try. To, I'm gonna get some secret ones. You want to go the fresh ones? I got freshies. All right. Here is a fresh one. Um, I'm gonna have to edit this one at the end, but I thought you guys would find this one funny, and I thought it'd be pretty perfect for ACT. Here we go. Hey guys, I was listening to the OG show about uh, going to the comedy club and people making noises and stuff. Well, uh, somebody made a comment about going to the restroom during Ari Shafir's uh, set. Yes. So I once went out on a date with a girl, and Michael Winslow was the was the headlining act. Um, and we had drank a bunch of alcohol, and I had to get up and go pee. So I got up to go pee. Well, unbeknownst to me, as I left the room, Michael Winslow did a, almost like a five minute set on oh. me taking a gigantic. <laughs> Okay, he says, like, taking a gigantic S word. Oh, yeah. man. So I guess Michael Winslow went on to do... Now, there are a lot of comedians, I feel like, that will comment if you get up during their set. And it's kind of like, and good on them, because it, it can be uh, it can be inspiration. It can be a bit of comedy, you know? Like, it's part of the act at that point. And if you really have to go, and you're at a comedy show, I think you've also, in your mind made peace with the fact that you could become, you know, you could be pulled in, right? You could be pulled into his universe if you move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Scary. Yeah, it can be kind of scary. But what's weird is the one comedian, there's a, there's a, okay, more than one, but one of the only comedians that you wouldn't want this to happen to because he's so powerful with the fart noises 
is Michael Winslow. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> that guy's going to tee up on you all day. If you're leaving and going to the bathroom, he's like, yes, I can do my 15 Fart minutes of turn. <laughs> yeah, I right. think. I'm, I'm, he I'm probably tra- knows yes. that whoever, you know, he's, he's done it so long that he's like, all right, someone is eventually going to get up, and then I'll do my fart noises. That's my point. Yeah, I, yeah, I, he doesn't I, got much. Yeah, it's I, not like he's doing political commentary. It's well, Michael Winslow. Well, I wouldn't even say it's not that he has much. I'd say that, that it's his specialty. I mean, the guy yeah, yeah, yeah. is good at making noises, and one of the first noises, naturally, I think we make as humans is the fart noise. Babies do it, and pfft, they do that naturally. And Michael is just the Jordan of that. So if you get up to go to the bathroom oh. during his comedy set, you're getting three minutes of turns. <laughs> That's just, it's going to happen. And uh, I, although it does make it... On uh, a date, though? On a date? That's embarrassing, yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, man. That's rough. I feel bad for you, sir. It makes uh, you not want to get up during... The show, which makes it a worse experience because a lot of people are holding their PP and then yeah. they, they can't pay attention to Let's rank the it. show. Let's because- rank it. I think comedy show is the number one. Because you'll get roasted. Because you'll not get roasted. Not necessarily. I always, like, I try and sit either towards the middle or the back just so I'm not front and center and then getting up in front of the entire audience, you know, and distracting the comedian on stage. Yeah. But if I am, I debate what... It really depends on the comedian. There's certain comedians that won't do it. They understand, like, you're just going to get up and go, and they don't mention it. I don't come back But in. there are some that I know. That's why Ari Shafir, I was like, I'm not getting up. I don't I come back I will not in. get up during this set. No, I've only just, done it one time. You just leave and you get in your oh, car and drive away. I almost my pants so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've only done it. And then it. he wanted to do. He wanted to talk to us after the show, and I, my husband ran off to the bathroom, and I'm like, you son of a... <laughs> yeah, he he knew I had to pee real bad. Yeah, he ghosted us. I, hey, he I, pee. I've only done it one time. And I never went back in. <laughs> you just stayed outside. <laughs> I, I'm yeah, not, I, I look, probably do I'm that not, too. I'm not. Happy. You just stay in there. Don't wait good. in the lobby. You wait in the yeah. lobby. They they have the audio on. And yeah, I'm yeah, being yeah. serious you with you guys. I'm it, being yeah. dead serious with you with guys. With what comedian? I can't remember the comedian, but I know for a fact I've only done it one <laughs> time, hilarious. and I know for a fact I didn't go back in. It, I've been trained from um, from uh, musicals. Uh, I've been trained from my gay friends that have put on multiple shows at venues in town, the Fringe Festival. Once you're out, one of the worst things you can do is to muscle your way back in. And it's just, if you're, I just, yeah, I can't do it. (laughs) Once I'm out, I'm out. And so I wait until I'm looking at my watch, and, and I knew that there was close to like maybe 10 minutes tops left, right? So I went. By the time I come back out, maybe there's eight minutes left, and then I just sit out there with uh, Jersey and some of the other people. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, hey, guy. They're like, hey, Dan, what's up? I'm like, I just, you know, I don't feel like See, I'm not going to go back in there and do it. I don't want to get made fun of, but I'm also good at getting made fun of. So It doesn't I, bother you. No, it, it doesn't at all. I, I don't like the attention. But, I, it but you'll roll with it. But yeah, and I'll do the, I'll walk back and the comedian's like, oh, look at this guy. He couldn't wait. Uh, then I'll just put my hand up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. You yeah. go goofy because I, I don't want to be awkward. To I think you uh, yeah. are, you're almost immune to what I'm describing. I don't think it affects you. Like it affects me no, more. I, I, I'll sit there and hold it until I'm like, I'm going to pee pee my pants, and then I'll, I'll just get up, and then if they start making fun of oh. me... You, you ever had this one, where the person you're with gets up to go, yes. and the comedian starts attacking you? And you're sitting there. That happened to me. Yeah. And I went along with it, but uh, everybody at Will's Pub thought I did butt stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, I'm going to yes and you, Heather Shaw. I'm going to yes and you. I've never had the Heather Shaw Will's Pub butt stuff story, but we'll just shelve that. (laughs) I'm going to show you the move that I do. I'm going to put this on camera, too, so people can see it. I'll put it on the main camera. Because if you fight it, it's worse. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You look worse because you don't have a mic, and then so you're never going to win. So it's always just take it. Right. You take it, make it. Take it, you make it. I'm going to show you I look like everybody's laughing good, whatever. Some guy, you know. Right. I'm going to show you guys how I do it. I was going to put it on camera, and then I realized we're not even taping this. But check this out. This is how I do it. I go really fast. I'm pretty good at it. This is the move that I do if I have to leave. And since I'm small, <laughs> I implore the Oh, small that is better, technique. because when you're a tall, you like yeah, me, it sucks. It's hard. Okay, watch me. Ready? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, that's too that's fast. That's active shooter <laughs> run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I get out. Yeah, you, you ran like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I get out for the bathroom. Seriously. That's too how, quick? That's how I do it. And I. It's shocking. It's like, what happened? <laughs> yeah, it's like, there's Why a leprechaun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's got a gun. Hey, hey, 
they everybody wants to see leprechauns. Yeah, leprechaun, yeah. Like it, yeah. Everybody thinks there's a leprechaun loose in the club. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Andrew, Andrew even makes fun of me saying, "Why do you get so low?" Well, it's the lowest I get. I'm not flexible. But man, if I'm trying to get out of a video and not be seen, I use my height to my uh, to my uh, to my advantage. Yeah. I go low and fast, as, and then I never go back in. <laughs> I'm describing all the natural characteristics of a hermit, I feel like, or a hobbit of some sort. You know, but I also feel like if the comedian mentions the people going to the bathroom, then it's part of their act. Yeah, then it's okay. Then you're actually helping them because they're waiting for someone to do it. Hold on a second. When you say you're actually (laughs) helping them. Well, because (laughs) if they they have material uh, like uh, loaded for that, then they're waiting for it to happen. If no one does it, then they can't do that material. And they're probably like, oh... So like, I'm sure they got better material, material than bathroom material, well, except for maybe Michael Winslow. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, again, I'm he not. Does not. This is not I, a, I'm not saying anything negative. We just, interviewed him one time, and yeah. all he could do was the noise. He, well, no, no it was just like, <laughs> like it was like we just want to talk to you, and yeah. it's like he's not. That's what it was. Yeah, everything was a yes. He would start talking. You could you could witness it. Like he would start talking. And then he would be talking as himself, and I feel like you could even feel him get uncomfortable and go, oh, I don't like being myself, here's a siren. Yes. Or, oh, I don't like being myself, a chicken walk by. Like, it was, yeah. you could almost feel like a it. a defense mechanism. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, yeah. I don't want to talk about me, I just want to make noises. I do yeah, it if that's you, what it was. I mean, like, Sam will walk in here and say, like, oh my god, did you hear the blah 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 is really sick or something like that? It'll be quiet, and then I'll say something inappropriate. It's yeah, 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 it's the thing. It's it's a response to being uncomfortable. Maybe I think um, uh, who's that comedian that was hot for a while doing every impersonation of everybody? They had him on like uh, um, you know football programs. Doing- oh, um, Frank Caliendo. Yes. Frank Caliendo. Frank Caliendo is kind of like that. I think. Why is my memory working again? It. Uh, I can see his face, but I'm like, ah, oh, I can't he- remember that guy's name. <laughs> I, I he looks a little Marcus Crespo y too. We determined this morning that the, the million dollar man Ted DiBiase looks exactly like comedian Marcus Crespo. I remember it, like interviewing him and him, like he just started going into all the impressions. Pablo and, Francisco has a little bit of that. Yeah, like there's they're, a, they're there's uncomfortable. There's a tactful way to do it, like a Rob Paulson that we talked to, where he would slip in a yakko every once in a while. Not an impressionist, though. It, yeah, but he does a ton of voices. He does, yeah. but it, a voiceover work and impressionist may be different because. I have a feeling that Robert, uh, or Rob rather, has no problem being himself. Right. Whereas maybe a Pablo Francisco. Look, I don't make some sort of psychoanalyzing a person I don't even know. Yeah, but, but I think Pablo, like that. Pablo seems more comfortable using the voices to communicate who he truly is. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. that comes from the way he was. I don't know how close he was with his family. Probably or, how the voices became so good. It's just like that's what he always yeah, did as be, a kid or something. You know? It becomes your real language, not your secondary language, and that's why you're so damn good at it, right? Yeah, and Rob Paulson. Like, like it, because then the the opposite end of that spectrum is the uh, the impressionist that doesn't want to do any impressions because they're tired of media asking they're them to there. do, and then so they never do any of them, and then it's awkward because it's like well people want to hear something <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. a little bit so like Rob. When we were interviewing him, like he knew, he's like, I'll give him some Yakko, you know, like, and he worked it in. And it was right. tasteful. He yeah. gave him what the audience wants because that's what they do want without us asking the awkward, like, hey, do the thing. <laughs> because yeah. Oh, I hated pe- that. But people want to hear that. So if you don't, if they don't do the thing, then it's like, Ah, oh, he didn't do the thing. <laughs> like it's you know, but you don't want to ask. So it's like he mix it a little bit and then you move on. One of the uh, he did it perfect. One of the things that I'm I'm really glad is gone, but I still hear it. In fact, we're on the hook for one that we need to record. Our friend Remy, who does uh, Remy's Roundtable podcast, mm-hmm. he um he had asked to have you and I do a celebrity endorsement, saying, "Hey, it's me," t- or "Hey, it's Dan from Tom and Dan." Oh, That's Tom. It. And uh we <laughs> and we listen to and we listen to Remy's round table right here on Spotify. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, that's the one we I'm have to say in. we listen. I guess we have. I mean, we have. Before. I mean, is he only on Spotify? It's, it's, it's more, actually, I think he concentrates on Spotify. Okay. Yeah, I think he wanted us to. That's the way he wanted us to do it. I, I haven't sent him anything yet, but I can remember, and one of the big ones that sticks out of my brain. <laughs> it's it, funny because what, what, like it's a that's an old radio thing. It is, but yes, and there is something. 
Okay. This is how dumb I am because, like, I'll listen to a uh, fantasy football podcast before yeah. the season, right? And the the one that I listen to, they'll get like NFL players to do that, right? Oh yeah. And it's it's really the only podcast I've ever heard that uh, did the thing that Must radio be an did. Old man, there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. I smell an old man. I think it's just they have access to some NFL players or whatever, so they just ask them to record or whatever. Think fast. Does it move the needle for you? It does. Ah, <laughs> all right. And it shouldn't because I totally understand that these NFL players have no idea what the show is and they're just doing the thing and they because someone asked them to. Uh, but it, but it, you're like, oh, it's pretty cool. There's a connection kind of thing. I don't even know. It's it, it, like I am. I know it's nothing. But still, what is like? It tricks hey, your brain. Hey, you're like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> it's like, hey, I'm Marshawn Lynch, and you're listening to uh, the fantasy now football. The, or the, I'm like, oh, the know. trick is though, and a lot of people, I've said this before, but the trick is to get one person. So let's say if you've got a list of celebrities you want. If you can get one, I'll use him because he's a celebrity we know, easily accessible, and I could probably get him to say this. We have Dan Cummins, comedian Dan Cummins, good friend of the show, coming in here today. We love this dude. Love his wife, Lindsay, his family. They're awesome. We could get him to say, hey, this is Dan Cummins, and you're listening to Tom and Dan. Now, what you do is you go and you scrape YouTube for every celebrity. You get Lady Gaga saying only this. Hey, it's Lady Gaga. You get Justin Bieber saying this. Hey, it's Justin Bieber. You get Jay Z. Hey, it's Jay Z. It's your boy. You know, you get that. Yeah. Then you stack them all up, yep, and yep, then at yep. the end, you put Dan Cummins saying, "Hey, this is Dan Cummins, and you're listening to Tom and Dan." You have given the illusion. I know a radio station <laughs> that used to do that. Yeah. I know every radio yeah. station used to do that because at one time I was listening to XL, and they yep, that's I, who I was and, say. and then they had like. Hello, it's Barack Obama. I'm like, nah, no, hey, Barack Obama ain't listening to no damn XL. Like, it, 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 <laughs> right. and then a big, a big <laughs> light bulb went off in my brain, and I'm like, oh my god, this is all fake. They only, fake. they yeah, got yeah. the most approachable celebrity they could find. They got him to cut the, and you're listening to Tom and Dan, and then everything else is just the celebrity saying hey and their name. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it tricks you into thinking they got the juice. But, but it's weird in the fact that. Every I, I imagine that m- the majority of listeners know that Barack Obama no. is not listening to no, they XL. Or, they don't know. Really? A lot of like, people still don't under- A lot of people still. Have- How dumb are we? Uh, <laughs> as a society, the answer to that have would you be. Have been on Facebook? <laughs> my answer to you would be: How dumb you want to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People think that War on the Roses is real. Yeah. Yeah. People think that reality do, shows are real. Do they think people it's think real we or have they Mondays just don't off. Hate. Yeah, people think we have Mondays <laughs> off. <laughs> do they just don't... People like, think everything we say on this show is real. <laughs> yeah, they, they, or, it's not. Or is it they just don't even care to think about it? I I'm, think that's that it. True, they're just like, who cares? I'm just listening to... Ah, they just nothing. It's, it's nothing but a, it, you're having to make a micro-assumption, right? It's an assumption. Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, what's that? Barack Obama? Oh, well, they have Barack Obama. Okay, okay. <laughs> driving to work. I mean, that's how it works. It 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 is an odd old school radio thing to have like I guess it's just a celebrity endorsement, but I don't know it it it, it does move the needle a little bit where it's like oh look at well, that guy it, it, this guy it, said something in our world it used to mean that you had access so like if you were listening to a NASCAR podcast. If Tuttle were doing a NASCAR podcast, which he could very easily do. He, he used had, to do, right? Yeah, he used yeah. to do it. It was good. He has a lot of NASCAR knowledge, uh, more than you would even know, right? If he's like, hey, if you were listening to his podcast, hey, it's Tuttle and this is my NASCAR podcast, that's great. But if you started his podcast and it said, hey, what's up? This is Dale Jr. and I'm here at the ranch hanging with my buddy Tuttle. You'd be like, oh my that would God, be pretty, yeah, that's I would dope, say that's right? It cool. does, it does. <laughs> if you have access to them, I don't have a problem with you letting me know as a viewer or as a listener that you, I mean, I, I, I'm with you. I think it does move the needle, but I think people have gotten away from it because it's just kind of, I, okay, nothing, so back to my story. <laughs> my story was, I remember Emerald Lagasse was in the building and he was doing a book signing tour um, of a uh, book. This is my test my memory. It's called Emeralds um, Emeralds TV Dinners is the name <laughs> of the book. You can look it up. Oh. Um, and he was doing the book tour. And he came in, and I was excited to, to meet him. Obviously, our, our friend Jim Colbert, a big cook, he really excited to meet him. Afterwards, they're kind of parading him through the hallways. He's saying hi to the news station and everything. There's that little booth that you and I used to go to, a little sound booth. And they asked him, and I was standing right there. They're like, Emerald. 
We'd like to get a couple of sound drops for you uh, saying, you know, like, hey, this is Emeril Lagasse and you're listening to the Monsters in the Morning. Or, hey, this is Emeril Lagasse, you're listening to the Phillips file. And he said, I will absolutely not do that. No, I like that. Yeah, <laughs> I like that too. Because yeah, it's like, yeah. I don't listen I'm almost to positive yeah. it was Emeril Lagasse. Like, if, if it wasn't Emerald, it was the soccer player, um, Kobe Jones. I don't know why I'm mixing those two guys up. It's just it, that time is, is hard for me to, to recall. But I remember him denying it, like saying, absolutely not. I, I will not do that. Yeah. It's kind of like the time we offered a craft beer to Harlan Williams and said, hey, can we get a picture of you with this craft beer? They, these guys really love you from Half Baked. And he was like, no, nah, no, nah, I, I, don't, I don't drink. I won't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I respected Which, it. Yeah. I respected the fact they He's said like, no. I'm not going to endorse something that I don't know. No, yeah. Why would I do that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, Which is true. Although, if I was a celebrity, <laughs> I'd do anything. I'd do I, because I could never say no to anybody. They're like yet. holding a bloody shit uh, machete. <laughs> yeah. you know? They're like, say this, and I'll say anything. I'm just so I don't have to tell them no. Because I don't God, have the, man, you gotta. I don't have the balls to be like, I will not do that. Because I don't, I don't think. It's that, not even balls, it's just boundaries. You yeah. have the boundaries. Yeah, I don't like, have boundaries or balls. Everything's a yes. Why do you think we have all those pictures of Tom? with all these All Lives Matter shirts on. It's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why are you doing that? Because I don't, like, I, I, like, even though I truly believe that what they're doing is correct and you shouldn't endorse something or say, like, I'm listening to this or whatever, if it's not true, right? You just don't it, think it's a big deal. But, yes, the, 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 they I go back you. to, like, they're just asking, this doesn't matter, I'll just say it, it'll make them happy, and therefore they don't think I'm a D-head. Because no matter what, if you say, no, I will not do that, People will be like, well, that guy's a D-head. And then that's what the, you know, people tell that story. They're like, I asked him to do this, now, and he said no. I will say my initial reaction was, I'm just being honest, was, yeah, well, I was like, what the hell? Why can't you do it? <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, serious. Yeah. Well, that's of course. And that was my initial reaction. But now after after a couple of years have gone by, we know Harlan, I think out of, out of most comedians, he's been very nice to us. He signed some children's oh, books yeah. for our kids. I actually quite respect the fact that he's, he said, no, nah, I, I just don't do that. He was very kind. Well, he doesn't yeah, drink he alcohol, that. so he's not yeah. going to endorse an you know, alcohol product. Also, I'm glad his... that I gave it a beat and I can look back on it now and be like, yeah, that's what he was supposed to do. Yeah, It's a form of, will you endorse this product, which absolutely you should be is. paid for. It absolutely is. And you're trying to get someone to endorse a product for free, which is kind of essy on the person who asked them oh, to. Yeah. You know, right. like, even, well, but we didn't mean it like that. Honestly, we wanted a picture with this particular just to beer. Send with him, like, it, yeah. To send to Lagunitas. It was going to be like yeah, a joke. We were going to use it, but like, yeah. Harlem Wilhelm drinks this. Yeah, so it's drink. only drinks. You yeah. know, like, it, it wasn't but he doesn't know that. Correct. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and good on him for being smart enough. I mean, uh, anybody that really knows him says he's a genius. You know, like, the guy's like super smart. Yeah, yeah. But of course he knew that, you know, and he was very kind when he said no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know... Did it make you uncomfortable? Oh, yeah. Well, it made me uncomfortable that uh, Ross... Because Ross asked him about the... You know, because I wouldn't even have asked him... See, I couldn't remember who asked. Ross also asked to open up for... Uh, Jay Moore. <laughs> no, it was... Um, Dave Coulier. Dave Coulier. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and that was did- awkward, too. I forgot about See, that. I do respect that Ross has the balls to ask. I, oh, yeah. But if you, you don't you, ask, you, you, you you'll never ne- get it. Yeah, 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 just I, like Miss Pat said... I even told Ross that. I was like, yeah, I'm glad you're asking. I mean, like, we have no control over that. But you also can't that, get mad when they say no, you know? Well, yeah, no. and I don't think he does. No. You know, I think that's a fun, you know, he's the perfect guy for that. And I, I agreed. I like the fact that he has the gumption enough to even ask it, because if it's going to happen, you got to ask first. Yeah. And you'd be surprised, like, just by asking uh, your whole life, like, you'll get more. Because, because you're running to Tom's a lot. Yeah, oh, yeah. There's a lot People of me. don't like to say no. A lot. <laughs> There's a lot of me. Well, like, really nice. you, can't you know, and a lot of celebrities but, are really nice. But if it's you not even about. It's, it's not, not about this being is nice. Not, I am, this is not. I have nothing to do with nice. Yeah. <laughs> this is because I, you can be nice and still say no. Because being nice means internally. I'm nice, but I'm just saying yes. I you don't, don't want, really to, want to do you know, it. Like if yeah. Ross, if Ross has to open for me, I'd just be like, yes, you can. And but inside, I'd be like, God! Hey, oh God, no, oh, I don't want it. I don't want it. And then I'll try to figure out how, like, maybe I could get the club to not let him in. Like, oh, oh my God, that's worse. <laughs> it's worse. It's worse. Wow. And Tell him yes, and then try and get and, a band and, from and, the club. And then it goes yeah. to like, don't let some this guy. sort I took a of picture. like. <laughs> Huh? It, all the time you'd have to waste to execute the sinister plan <laughs> that you had to create. My God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, we are that, crazy. That's a mental illness. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, but on the surface, I get no bad emails. <laughs> 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 but inside, I'm worse than everybody. Yeah, that's true. <laughs>
Well, that's like no one cares about anything real. It's just surface. Anyway, all right, bye bye. Welcome to a corporate time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I am Dan. Our producer Sam is here. Hello, Sam. How Hello, are you? Oh, I'm good. How what? Uh, where are we at in the Tom and Dan universe? Where are we taping this? Where's this laying? Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, are we taping in the future or is this n- the now? Future. Am I in the moment or mm. am I out of the moment? I mean, it's uh, future taping. What is time? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, it's just <laughs> a construct. Yeah. It's unnecessary yeah. constructs. This could be any time. Well, how was your five year for your semantics it was podcast? Great. Awesome. Shout out to everybody who stopped by. I heard you had a wonderful turnout at Rock Pit Brewing or yes. Brewery. Is a Rock Pit Brewery? Brewing. Brewing. They get mad when you do that. And I, I, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say the tough talk that I know Tom wants to say. If you are a brewer and you make beer, it's time to ease up on the shackles that you've placed on us as the public of knowing whether you are brewery or brewing. <laughs> yeah, it's time, yeah, to, yeah, it's yeah. time to take you, that. It co- has to be both. It has to be yeah, both. Yeah, it, it if be, I mess up and I say one, you don't, don't, don't never get correct me. Never correct me. And don't feel anything yes. about it. it yes. Just know that I mean you. Y- yes. You mean, it, the process of making the beer. That's what we're both yeah. talking about. We're both talking about brewery. Brewing, <laughs> yeah, it's the same. Brew, same. <laughs> yeah. I, I would accept yeah. brew, brew house, brew house, <laughs> brewer, <laughs> brewer, yeah. brewer, yeah, brewer, gym brewer, brew pub, <laughs> brew pub, <laughs> brew pub, gas. I, actually, no, no, gastro, no, gastro, pub. Pub. Don't do gastro. I don't like that. That one is not a like brew. We're a gastro, but like, don't disgusting. call yourself. Why are you talking about your innards? <laughs> God, why don't you come on down to my innards house? <laughs> it just means we yeah. make uh, burgers. Come on down to Billy's intestine room. Call it a burger. <laughs> burger. <laughs> burger. <laughs> but, but not the Something. Gastro burger. Burger pub. Don't, yeah. don't call it a burger pub. Um, okay, so we got that out of the way, but I'm glad you, I'm really proud of you. I'm glad you had an awesome five year. Shout out to your husband, too. Sometimes we forget about giving him some love and thanks. He is a, a wonderful man. So, yes. whistling toothpicks, if you're listening, <laughs> I'm giving you full love and I'm proud of you, man. Um, let's do some weird hobby Wednesday. All right. Now no. we're we're gonna, we're gonna get an intro song. Yeah, well, we're testing it out. This yeah, is yeah. the second one. This if this one goes correctly, I feel pretty confident we can file the paperwork to get this thing moving. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. on the line with us is the second contestant for Weird Hobby Wednesday. This is Taylor. Taylor, how you doing, Taylor? Yo. I'm cold as hell. How you guys doing? <laughs> Good. Where, where are you at? Yeah, where are you at? We're warm. I'm in Colorado. Oh yeah. It's like. Negative four plus wind. Ooh. It was hotter than, uh, yeah. I mean, it was ridiculous yesterday. yesterday. On, the on the canoe, I, it was bad, bad. It, yeah. I, had a, I had a spell again. Oh, you had a spell. I, yeah, I had to sit. I, I Okay, uh, hold on. That's now, hold not, on, Taylor. Okay, hold on a second. I, I kind of want to tell you this because it shows you heart how, check. how weak I am. You need to get your heart checked. No. You had another mini stroke, didn't you? Like the one you had when you were talking to Bernie, our accountant. Or no, you were talking to to the Streamline team. It it was this was more of a I was having a, a heat problem, like I do when I put the cover on my it's boat. A heat stroke, um, <laughs> and this was because I drank too much on the canoe ride back, and uh, I was hungover from the night before. Yeah, so two I was double hydrated, hangover. the double hangover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hangover, and then you drink again the next day. You get the double hangover, and then you got to hydrate with more beer. Yeah, and then it was what is it like eighty seven blazing sun, and then and we rode in the canoe Not a for cloud three hours. In the sky. <laughs> and here's the beautiful bad. sunshine. Here's the thing. <laughs> do about the canoe they make the canoe uh bright aluminum shiny <laughs> so it reflects a heat into your eyeball if you good. spit on it it's like a yeah. spitting on a two-stroke uh dirt bike oh it's pipe. crazy it's like <laughs> anyway so taylor what is your weird hobby uh my weird hobby is powerlifting all right powerlifting now are you gonna say that um every day when you get out of bed it's hard to carry your ding dong to the bathroom <laughs> No, it's just because my body hurts so much. Okay, so no, it's a real power lifting. It's not some dad joke is what I mean. So, Taylor, um, how did you get into power lifting? Did it start with just uh, exercise? When do you make the transition and be like, all right, I'm a workout dude. Too fat for running. Power lifting. <laughs> That's <laughs> what wanna, you say, right? And I want to get into power He's lifting. He's laughing, so there's some truth in that, okay, I feel like. Well, let's talk about what's the difference between a regular workout dude and then a power lifter. So a workout dude just, like, goes to the gym, doesn't necessarily have much of a plan. Is it He's only working out to be healthy or to look good or whatever. Sure. Uh, powerlifting. So I lift specifically for powerlifting competition. Nice. Which is uh, squat, bench, and deadlift. 
Uh, then he gets, so you get three in a competition. You get three attempts for each. They count your highest one, and that's called your total. Um, and you're just trying to make the highest total at a meet. That's right. dope, man. I like that. So, Taylor, did you have the genetic body type for power lifter? Troll. Because You're going for troll here. Most <laughs> trolls are uh, power li- I I actually have the body type of a power lifter. I'm just a weak troll. <laughs> you need to be bigger. We used to be called gay trolls, but you can't say that anymore. I'm a weak troll. <laughs> so, so, Taylor, uh, do you, because there are people that I feel can never be a power lifter, uh, like Daddy Longneck, you know, <laughs> yes. there's nothing he can do <laughs> no. that will ever make him a power mm-hmm. lifter. Genetically, he cannot. Even if he wanted it, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, he cannot get himself into the body. T- so, did you start off with like, all right, you have the genetic predisposition of being a power lifter? No, not really. I was super skinny and like had six knee surgeries, and I was like, definitely not. Uh, anybody can be a power lifter. It just you have to be special to be a good power lifter. Oh, I'm special. And so, yeah, I'm a little special too. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, hold on. So Taylor, what is your like? How big are you now? I'm six two two forty two forty five. That's a okay. big, that's a that's a beefy monster so, boy. Yeah, be fair to them. So you're, you're, beefy, not, you're a monster boy, Taylor. You uh, are slapping me in the face with my questions because you're not you are not, you are genetically a power lifter. Six two two forty. I was skinny. Okay. Was. Well, what, when you were fifteen, or like you? yeah, like I'm t- I said, Daddy Longneck. Have you seen him? He's yeah. a mutant. Uh, yeah, he's like he, a broomstick. You know what I'm saying? He's not like I can understand you're a six two skinny when you're. 17, uh, but when you grew into a man, you were a big dude, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I guess. Okay, right. Well, thank you. Uh, so, <laughs> the, uh, and now, what, where do you start off with, like, do you, do you have to get a trainer? Can you do this yourself? Like, let's talk about the training, how, and how much oh, training is your it? curiosity. You want to be power lifter now? You should get in there, uh, dude. You can do... You can do whatever you want. I mean, you, if you just want to do it yourself, that's fine. If you want to be good, I would definitely recommend getting someone that knows what the hell they're talking about. Um, there's, like, programs you can buy online or you can hire coaches. Coaches are generally pretty dang expensive. Um, I have, like, an exercise science background, so I did a lot of it myself to begin with nice. before I hired a coach. All right. Well, it must be helpful, like when when you're knowledgeable in like exercise science or sports science. It must be a lot easier for you. That like that would be the hard thing for me is knowing what I'm going to be able to do that isn't going to injure me or like if I have a limitation and I need to like modify the exercise. How to do it without injuring myself? Did you have to do a lot of that? Uh, yes and no. I've injured myself a good amount. Yeah. Well. Uh, but that also hinders you, like, you know, the proper training is probably super important because if you... Form. It's everything is form, You know, right? you, you rip your biceps off the bone. I mean, that takes a while to... I mean, that happens. I yeah. see that uh, on TikTok. <laughs> some, uh, some guy was ripped both his biceps. Yeah, TikTok got everything. And I was like, oh, my God. What's in your algorithm? And, uh, oh, my God. It goes from but, mounds to people ripping their biceps rip off. Your biceps <laughs> off. And I just imagine that if you have an injury like that, it could be catastrophic to... Uh, your training regimen, and you have to take X amount of months off and then rehabilitate, and then you can probably maybe never get to that strength you were. Sure. So uh, how do you make sure you don't get injured? Uh, well, you got to be smart. Listen to your body. I've partially torn both my pecs, um, and then, and you're right. You do have to take a decent amount of time off and, like, rehab. Um, I was able to come back stronger, but it takes it definitely takes time, and I was being stupid when I did it. So let's talk about like what you have to eat because I know that it's important that a power lifter eats the right amount of like protein and Fat. and but yeah all that stuff. So wh- how many calories you can cons- do you consume and what's your nutrition like? Um, I don't track my calories, but I eat the same. I've eaten the same breakfast, uh, lunch, and like afternoon lunch. I don't know what to call it. The exact same, almost the exact same one for like four years or so. Give and us a I rundown. Eat. Yeah, give us so a rundown. Bre- so breakfast I do, um, eggs, cheese, and potatoes, um, and then some sort of vegetable with fiber like peppers or carrots. 
Uh, and then I follow the vertical diet is what it's called. And then for lunch, I do white rice and either bison, steak, or chicken, and then peppers and spinach with that, and I eat that twice. And then for dinner, I eat whatever my wife cooks. All right. Yeah. So we're never going to be able to do <laughs> just the one, I, just the breakfast, the same every day. Like I just can't. Well, Tom can do that for sure. Yeah, he can, but he'll. But he, out of convenience, he goes to places that aren't going to structure it the way it needs to be <laughs> no. structured. He needs yeah, it yeah, to be yeah. mummy bones, <laughs> but mummy bones is garbage. So yeah, he goes yeah. with like fruity smoothie, and that's not <laughs> yeah, the same. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. the same. So uh, Taylor, when uh, w- when you're like at a competition, like. Talk to us about the weight you actually lift and what we're How talking here. How do you determine here. what you're going for, too? And, and are you ba- is it based on, like, age groups or height and weight? How does that work? So there, there's a couple different ways. Honestly, powerlifting is kind of silly because it has so many different classes. It's kind of silly. Um, really, the only one that I care about is called the open class, um, and that's ages... 23 to 40 and then there's i believe it's 40 and then there's different weight classes um in it so you can have like super small guys small girls um you know any any size and you just compete with the people that are within your weight class oh that makes sense so like yeah yeah like i compete against guys that are like 220 to 242 that's my weight class gotcha interesting and what kind of what kind of weight are we talking that you do uh, I can just tell you, so my best numbers, my best squat is 584, my best bench is 455, and my best deadlift is 650. Now, that's good. What are the rules with bench? Because I know that, like, I've seen some mega gigantic dudes, like, and they're doing the bench and literally dropping it down maybe three or four inches before it hits their chest and then they bounce it back up. And I'm like, well, that doesn't seem like a yeah. proper Olympian style yeah, bench like, press or whatever. What is, the, <laughs> what is correct form on that? Uh, so there's three judges watching every lift. And they, each judge gives you the, either a red light or a white light. A white light means that you did everything right. A red light means that you messed something up. Uh, for bench, your butt, your feet, and uh, always have to stay on the bench. And you have to wait for the referee to say start at the top of the bench, bring it down, hold it on your chest, wait for the referee to say press, press it up, hold it at the top, and wait for the referee to say rack. Okay, that's a that's hard. How do you concentrate on that while not having your BH blow out of your <laughs> compression short? That, that's no, called I, a tulip. I'm serious because like all of that, like I know that I get into some. Okay, I'll use a real world example. Like like even when we're at our trainer, or if I'm doing some sort of Peloton thing where I'm like having to push as hard as I possibly can yeah. for let's say a minute. I get to a point where I get to I get so freaked out, and this is the good part of anxiety. This is the the being able to control it and what is healthy for me. Where I have to calm myself down and make sure that I don't just scream obscenities. You know, like yeah. how do, how do you get the mental fortitude to kind of control that? Uh, it's really freaky. It's honestly like it, it's scary every time you do it. Yeah. It's a little bit scary because your body's like holy dude. Like, why are you doing this to me? This sucks. Yeah. And it just it just kind of comes with practice. Like, you just have to practice and practice and practice and be like, okay, I know this is going to suck for the next 15 seconds. And just be okay with it being sucky for 15 seconds. Yeah. Like, are you addicted to that? Because I have found that the more I do that and the, the terms that I hear some of my friends that – that train and lift a lot. So being okay or being comfortable with being uncomfortable is what they say. And I'm kind of get I get off on it a little bit. Now, and I can only imagine that what you're doing on such a high level, man, that's got to be. Have you ever like? Well, I'm not. I'm not that high level. Well, higher than level. me. I'm saying. Have you, you ever to passed? Competitions. Yeah, you're you're competing. Have you ever passed out or you ever gotten to a point where it was a little too much? Uh, yeah, I've almost passed out a couple of times. Never completely blacked out, but I've certainly seen people pass out um 
I've seen people poop their pants. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the old, like I like the sports. <laughs> do where they, they don't poop your pants? Do they keep lifting? Because right. they're all like, yeah. Don't worry, just once, keep lifting. Uh, once it happens, they they, they like yeah. freak out and let. Do you like, re-rack <laughs> all of the weights <laughs> politely, and then well, as you're dripping, or yeah. how do you? I've never seen it in a competition. I've only seen it in the gym, and and people just kind of put the weight down and go to the bathroom. Oh, Although, my God, girls, girls that power lift on a uh, well, not well, girls that power lift when they deadlift, uh, they pee have a, lot. a tendency, yes. You can say it. It's just science, man. They got weak. Everybody knows that girls down there are just looking for an excuse to pee. I think they lie to us. Like, my wife's like, ah, when I laugh too much, I pee. When I lift this, I pee. When I'm cooking, I pee. When I cough, I pee. I'm like, you just want to pee everywhere. You know? Stop being an animal. Stop being an animal for the love of Christ. You know? Suck your gut in a little bit. Get your posture up. It's It's like not a very healthy sport. (laughs) <laughs> oh, don't say that. Taylor. Sounds miserable, Taylor. <laughs> Let, let's, let's talk about PEDs. Because let's go to Sam. What do you think, Sam? It's miserable. Back to you guys. <laughs> Boring diet. Almost blow your BH out. Sounds terrible. If if you're like only competing in like uh, non-sanctioned competition, I don't know what kind of competitions or what level you're competing in, but do they drug test you to keep oh, like performance enhancing drugs out of there? They do. Uh, so the way they so they have tested federations and untested federations. Um, tested federations, they test. It kind of depends, but they test like maybe ten to thirty percent of the people that are in them. So, in my opinion, I think that a lot of tested federations people get away with using some sort of PEDs. Um, but that being said, there's also untested federations, and untested federations, anything goes. And that's like where you that. see some of the, like, real, well, just insane numbers. Yeah, I want but I want to want them to look insane, too. I want the tiny, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want the tiny pink T-shirt with the spaghetti straps. I want the flat-top bleach blonde hair. Yeah. I want the biceps that are so big and, and vascular that they look like, oh, they just look like, oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. motor arms. <laughs> yeah, motor arms. <laughs> I want all of that. I want the I want the yeah. tan. You're like, oh no, you you yeah. ruined your body. Yeah, I want the guy to be so big that the only pant he can wear are sweat shorts. <laughs> <laughs> so the world record holder lives in Florida. You can look him up. Of course he name. does. <laughs> of course he lives in Florida. Dan, Dan Bell. <laughs> Dan Bell. Dan Bell. <laughs> Dan so, Bell. Yep. So let's get Dan Bell on the show. Taylor, is it is it just testosterone with the PEDs with the power lifters, or is there a bunch of other stuff? Is like HGH and other like growth hormone, or tell me about uh, the drugs. I don't, I don't really know. I don't really know too much. I know that they're out there, and I know people do them. I know that for sure. I don't know about like specifics, but I'm sure. Yeah, HGH. Testosterone. Um, there's I something get called equipoise, and that's, that's something to do. You give it to horses to heal them. No, don't, don't like talk they, about that. That kills people's shows if you talk about <laughs> taking horses. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of some other one. There's so, one that's called Tren that they give to uh, like steers and like cattle that they're trying to make look all crazy. Yeah, I want what the buff roux is taking. Give me some of that buff roux juice. <laughs> the, Remember so, the buff roux? Yeah, yeah. That, I want to look like that guy. That's some sort of genetic anomaly that animals have, where they uh, they like they overly produce like uh, whatever cuts your muscles. or whatever yeah. you know. And, like what um, happened to the good old days when all we needed were some hydroxy cuts and a couple <laughs> poofs of wind straw, and you're uh, <laughs> off to the races. Taylor, tell us about smelling salts and how powerlifters use those. Dude, they're awesome. Have you ever done them? I want to now. Let's do it. Come to the studio. <laughs> I have. Someone showed me like a paramedic spell, a smelling salt one time, and it we is. We have some in our studio. We want to do it right now? We got some in our kit. Do we? Like, I think you, so. can, you should do them. They're, it's cool. It like it basically, you can order it. It's pretty cheap. It's like 20 bucks for a bottle. It's pretty cheap. Um,. But yeah, you just you sniff it before like a big lift or a big set, and it kind of just kind of it wakes up your nervous system and wakes up your brain, and like it's just kind of like getting slapped in the nose. I don't know how to explain it, but it 
I enjoy it. Is it like a it's jolt a- of uh, like, it's like uh, a jolt cola of? Uh, you know, like adrenaline or something. I mean, like it's just like waking you up. Uh, but yes, but it's just ammonia, right? Yeah, it's just ammonia. Just, it's like sniffing. It sucks. Like if you can overdo it, I got it in my eye once, and I thought I was blind. <laughs> okay, all right. I appreciate your How honesty. How did you get it in your eye? Is it, well, is it all dangerous? Yeah, he's a you know he's he's uh, been in over getting I'm his sure coffee. If you were to overuse it, it would be dangerous. <laughs> getting it in your eyes is dangerous for sure. Yeah, That's, you don't want to get ammonia uh, in your eyes. I've heard about that. <laughs> That's why they have those rinsing stations at like the school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and it always says like if you get ammonia in your eye, it's like you know you get there and you have rinse, rinse, rinse. So Taylor, is there like uh, are you at basic? Have you plateaued with what you're able to do? Because how old are you? And when? Like I'm sure you know some of the sports science behind it. Like there's probably only a smaller window that you have as far as how strong you could actually get before age starts taking it away from you. Uh, and I'm sure every lifter or power lifter knows, like, okay, I got these years, and this is when I'm going to be my strongest. And then I, I'm getting, uh, basically, every year I get older, I get diminishing returns just from age. Yeah, so I think it depends a little bit per person. Um, but for So I'm 32. Um, I am... Um about as strong as I've ever been, and part I, I think I have about three more years left because um, always get you have your tendons get stronger um, and your muscles become more mature. Um, so I've got about three years left, and then I think I'm, it's also not that great for my body. So I think after that, I'm going to probably stop and try to do something else. So let's you talk about try that. like pickleball <laughs> after that. So let's talk about not great for your body because like someone sees some guy. Oh, he's got ammonia all in him. <laughs> he's uh, full of ammonia. Yeah, but you're working out so much and your diet is good. But so what's wrong with it? And as, as long as you're, you're not taking any PED, so like you're just boring. Too uh, much like, stress on your body. Yeah, I like, feel like whoa. How like what's bad about it? So I never. I take TRT. What? Uh, TRT. I don't know what that is. Yeah, tell us what it is. That's what that's what Tom wants to do. It's testosterone replace, replacement therapy. Oh, TRT. Okay, well that's we know what that TRT is. <laughs> we know you're yeah, about yeah, 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 yeah. I just don't know about the other ones. I know about that one. Okay. Oh, if you're on TRT, yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah but it, you, as long as you keep your testosterone below a thousand, you're good, right? How does that How does that work? Um, I don't know. I take what the doctor prescribed me. So I get prescribed 200 milligrams a week. No, I need I that. that. I want 250. It. It's pretty It's pretty sweet, dude. I know. Yeah, Everybody Dan, says Dan it. Come and just don't talk, talk about, about it. it. <laughs> he said he was going to talk about I it. We w- forgot. I want to get it. Yeah, I know. I need it, though, because I'm going to be my quest to be little Danny muscle meatball. But I was talking to my friends about it over the weekend, and I'm like, I want to wait because once you're on it, you ain't getting off because there's no way you're going to opt to like, What's get the off optimum of age to get on it? I, I actually just got off of it because I got to get my wife pregnant again, so... Oh, oh yeah, oh, no, and you don't want to <laughs> kill her while you're banging her. Yeah, I've heard this. I've heard, I've heard this. you got to get off of it because you'll primate her. Does it lower your sperm count? No, it, yeah, it, but yeah, it ups your punch count. Your, it lowers your sperm count for sure. But is, is that the only, like, what well, about? Wait a minute, I've been wanting to get a vasectomy anyway, so maybe I can kill two birds with <laughs> little Danny Meatball shooting yeah. blanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can still definitely, like, from my understanding, you can get pregnant when you're on it. It just makes it more difficult. It also makes you muscle baby, and you, nobody even wants that. <laughs> well, it sort of does, and it sort of does. It just brings you back to where you're like supposed to be. I don't know where I'm supposed to be. It's been like the I forget what my numbers were the last time you and I got our T check. It was low, you know. Yeah, I know mine was low. I was get, highest, but still lowest of highest. You need to get you need highest to get lowest. Uh, right around that 800 to a thousand mark. Like that's. Peak. I want I want whatever it is I want because everybody that's on it successfully gets this look of their eye when you look at it. They're like. <laughs> yeah. They're a little bit like, yeah, look at me. We're coming to get you. Yeah, but I, I, you'll be on it. Like, I, I, Dad, when I looked at him, he's like, yeah, time oh, sucks. Like, everybody's like, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and because I they're uh, so horny and I, so yeah, strong. I want to be on that. Sir, when you called in, You're so I can horny. tell over the phone. Yeah. I can feel it. I can feel yeah, it this over guy's the phone. horny and powerful. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, like a, like a horny king. I want to be a horny king. Yeah, yeah. I'm the king. Well, Taylor, um, um, so you said you won some prize money one time. What? Uh, how much did you lift to win that? Oh, I hope it was for a pumpkin. No. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a hundred bucks. It's not that impressive. It was, uh, let's see, I squatted five 
567, benched 441, and deadlifted 639. That's, that's, uh, that's well, heavy uh, as hell. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm all for it. I'm in. I'm in. You're hearing it in his voice. Yeah, this guy's got it. Well, Taylor, thanks for uh, being a part of Weird Hobby Wednesday and telling us about your powerlifting hobby. Yeah, good luck with it, man. Yeah, thanks, fellas. All right. And Sam, thanks for everybody. Take it easy, dude. All right, bye. See ya. What a nice man. Is that that testosterone? I'm on. I'm on a mission now. And I'm the guy. I need to test it first before you guys. I'll be the fly. Yeah. I'll be the the Goldberg. How bad? Everybody who takes it uh, literally tells us how it's a miracle drug. Well, and and then you look at him, you're like, wow, you look amazing. Till their heart explodes. Yeah, well, you gotta keep it down. You keep it down. You gotta what, keep my heart? It, no, you gotta keep the ranges right. Well, and that's just, where it's expensive. It's like five hundred a month. But what? No, I just want to do like a like. Tss, that's it. I just well, yeah, every yeah. day spritz. just tss, just a spritz. No, they get they. That's where they. I don't even need the full blood. They're like, you got two hundred milligrams. I'm like, you know what? I just need a fifty. Give me as long as you take the blood test regular, and then you see that it's on like in the right ranges. Everybody says it's a miracle drug. Let's both get on it and let's both look like an awkward. Awkward but, tag team, wrestling tag team. But again, I don't want to be on it for the rest of my life because there's no way you're getting well, off ne- of it. Then you got to wait until you're 60. I'm sorry. Uh, well, I'm going to give it some time, though. Uh, you know, I'll wait till I'm 45. Five, like my age. Maybe, yeah, yeah, I'm already dead from it. Well, <laughs> dead well from if you die, like, they, bury me, on me. they go to bury me. They're like, where's Dan? It's just a giant heart here. Yeah, yeah his heart ate him. If you die, I'll tell them, give me one drop less. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not what you normally do. I got the carpet from at home floor store. This guy goes, give me one level of carpet higher than Dan's. You're just trying to drive me crazy. All right. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back with more corporate time. The problem is, like, technology is advancing so fast that who are you going to get? Some old, uh, fast. like, Can't so- even care social my studies te- in my like, <laughs> Some old social studies teacher is going to teach some high school about, like, how, to, like, modern no, day. Already, like, he don't dead. even know. He's dead. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's changed in, two, in the past two years. Like, some better app has come up. Like, you need to teach people currently. There should just be some universal class uh, that is taught. Phone I class. bet you can go to OCLS, Zoom. right? OCLS, yeah. I bet yeah, they yeah. have classes for it. Yeah, yeah. Something. But only if the teacher's good luck like getting young and hip. You don't have to force kids to Hot go. Book boy, is he teaching me my taxes? I'll go. There's no <laughs> he's, way I'm he's listening. He's too old. He looks great, but he's too old. I want a I young. Think he's younger than us. No, he is. But I mean, I need a young boy teaching me. I need okay. like a. <laughs> I need to look more like an island boy. I want him to look like the island boy. I don't want that guy teaching me. Also, no, like I was both of them teaching I, you one mm-hmm. time. I wasn't responsible at all in my twenties or teens. Most uh, people aren't, and I wouldn't have gone. Yeah, I was. Uh, I bought a house in my twenties, so right. I, I can't say I wasn't responsible. Well, I did too, but uh, I—I mean, irresponsibly. <laughs> like I bought right. at the height of the market. No, no. no it, what choice did you have? Well. I yeah yeah I guess there was no yeah, choice and no one foresaw yeah, no one I foresaw mean, it but anyway I made a horrible mistake <laughs> you know now it mm. wasn't uh, that the no only one mistake you made with that house seriously no, I don't think any of it was a mistake the only mistake you made with that house is painting your yard green that's it <laughs> <laughs> well I bought but it what, what and happened then with, what happened two at the years house? later is worth one hundred and fifty thousand but it had left. to happen you have no control over that nah, you I know. couldn't control the market. Yeah, I know. But it's like, I shouldn't have even, well, I was no no position to even buy a house. Crystal bought it on her footlocker income is absurd. That's pretty impressive. Like, that no. is pretty impressive, That's though. impressive, she, man. She, Shout out to footlocker. She made $30,000 right. a year. Which was, <laughs> wait, Champs was the parent company, right? Yeah. Shout out to Champs and footlocker for... No. Having Crystal buy her first house, no. that referee jersey, well, that referee jersey money. That was the re- she closed no, the house <laughs> in the jersey. It, there was no money. It was the goddamn uh, housing market. Shouldn't have never let her buy a house right. off thirty thousand yeah. dollars a year, uh, claiming. If it I herself. bought your wife the shirt and the black uh, yoga pants, would she <laughs> wear the uh, one more again? One more again? No, no. With a whistle, <laughs> throw it on one more time. <laughs> she uh, she worked her way up to managing them. that. That's, no, she never managed. Oh, that. I thought she did. That's a hard. No. That's one of the I can't man. If you could though, Forrest Stump, he was a manager, right? Yeah. That seems anybody like could be a one manager. of the single. <laughs> yeah. I know. If you I, want to, you could be a manager. I, no, you don't understand what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. You don't understand what I'm saying. I'm saying working in a shoe store is ridiculously hard. No. I think it would be hard. You both did. You yeah, both did shoes. I'm the hard. only yeah. person in this <laughs> I looked that around. It's that's not never hard. done shoes. It's not it's hard. It's actually quite easy. Yeah, I yeah. miss it. They, I want to do it. I want to do it. They it's done. easy, but you don't get paid nothing. Sign me up. I could be a shoe Inventory, boy. Inventory. Climb in the racks. The hardest part are the employees. 
That's and what I'm the saying. Customers. The customers. And the customers and the employees. That's the part yeah. I was thinking of. All the people. Of. That's yeah, yeah. the hard part. But the job is, uh, they easy. make it as easy as possible. Because they know. It's, yeah, 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 it's young kids I miss most that. You don't get that anymore. I miss going to the, the, the department store with my parents and sitting down in a chair and getting a pair of shoes. It was like a thing. <laughs> it's not a thing anymore. You do it online. Nah, yeah, yeah. Mimo's I still do it. I liked it when it was go a to Macy's. Thing. They're still there. No, I'm not going to do it anymore because that ship has sailed. Now, but people will look at me like I'm funny. But I'm just telling you personally, I very much enjoyed sitting down. What kind of shoes? Well, I have. I brought you the sample. I I went to the wall. I found the one I want. I'm bringing mm-hmm. it to you. You're going to go in the back. Come back and tell me you don't have my size, and then I will tell you good day. I will tell you, That's what, the, I've done that more times than anything I've ever done. Sh- shoes are hard to order online only because the all the sizes aren't standard. Like I did it with snowboard boots. I needed a bigger boot for my uh, yeah. You've been bruising feet. your toes. That's what Butler told me and before I, he pieced out. I ordered yeah, the, too tight. I ordered the, the bigger size, too tight, and it was like some new because the, they manufacture the new ones a little. Anyway, a little I was tight. like, oh god, I gotta put this back in the. Did you did you return it? Uh, I it's probably. Still in the back of my wife's car, oh. or, you know, like she. You'll just keep buying them until you get the right size. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then get... It's you, taking it back to the store. Oh God! Well, we can't with Amazon. You just file it. Or did you buy it at the store? No, no, no. The, we ordered it. It just you have to del- you have to take it to a freaking. You take it to a UPS store. Kohl's. Yeah. Kohl's. Or Kohls. Yeah, 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 you go into Kohl's. Well, like, God, going into Kohl's is sad, right? It's a little soul. It's a little sad. Yeah, because you're like, well, you just become a uh, return. Amazon return store. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do they keep any of the stuff and hang it up? I don't think so. I they think should. They ship it back. Because I think I would walk through there and look at what people the are returns? buying. Yeah, I would walk through as are, I'm returning. They're having those, um, like, they're. Amazon's having their own stores that are just returns that, yeah. are, that are discounted prices, which I think is pretty cool. Pretty it, cool idea. Get me some snowboard boots. It's yeah. cheaper than sending it all back. You just right, put exactly. It, cheaper than the know. dump. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, your yeah, yeah. idea. It's your yeah. old idea. Although I will tell you, Goodwill has starting to become uh, picky on what they'll take, and they will deny stuff. Now. Where are we at with Salvation Army? They'll so, take any old bag. Of, uh, just, uh, you could you leave it, it by the door. Being yeah. on Vets of America will pick it up from your house. They don't go through it. They just box it up. They come pick it up. Even and if they it's leave trash, you a little receipt. Yeah. Oh, so what put you it, do? Put is, it in a box or a bag. They don't go through no, it. They just, just put, load it in the truck. You put trash on the bottom. You put the good stuff <laughs> on the top. And they're like, "Here you go, boys." Yeah, but that involves like planning and going and filling <laughs> something out. Like, I need to get the garbage. No, out they of just my give you a piece of paper and you day. fill it out and you send it to the government, right? No, but I mean planning to have them come pick up and all that stuff. Oh, and then you have yeah. to leave yeah, it out just, front. You pick a date and they come and get it. That's the, I'm saying I need the garbage out of my garage today. Well, then just <laughs> like, throw it in the garbage. <laughs> no, no, man. No, no, like, no. Well, we can get rid Stop of it. Stop lying to yourself. You're not a good person. Just throw it in the wow. garbage. Wow. How much but, garbage are we talking? <laughs> I can help you get rid of this stuff today. What, how much are we talking? Oh, my whole garage is now full again. Okay. Um, how I, does that happen? I, well, you got to get rid of mental okay, illness. If you get rid of the witch, <laughs> I mean, how does anything happen? If you get rid of the witch, you instantly have six feet of more space. So it, <laughs> I can never get rid of that. You have to start with the witch. I can't get rid of the witch. What about the broken four wheelers? <laughs> well, once broken, okay, I need what to go about get it fixed. One? Yeah, but no, no, I need to save those. Um, but then there's a big. The middle is a whole full yard. Okay. What's in the big middle? There's a telescope. A telescope. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. Yeah. Why? No, because my wife he's bought been it. hiding secrets from no. us. He hid the telescope from us because he I got knew a food we would tele- bo- telescope shame him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I didn't want the crystal buy stuff, and I just hold my tongue because she bought a telescope for the French witch. No, she bought a telescope so the boys could do somehow an- amateur astronomy. Yeah, and they can look all at the kids moon. Love that. You know, it's better than Fortnite. Fortnite is way better than astronomy. We went out to the uh, backyard one time and looked at the moon. It was too bright. And And burned the rocks. (laughs) And then then it's been sitting in our garage ever since. Did you hear about Tom Suds? They burned their eyes on the moon. They had to go to the doctor. And then every six to eight months, uh, Crystal, while driving, tells me that she wants to sign the boys up to an amateur astronomy (laughs) course that they're having at the GD Science Center or whatever, where they get on the roof and they teach you how to use Use your telescope, but I just have to shake my like, uh, uh, uh. and then I just keep, keep driving because I know it's not gonna. I can't. I don't even say anything. I, I what I want to say is that that will never happen. Please, let's just punt this in the trash. It's a but. Thank you. You. This was a stupid purchase, but I don't. I just. Oh, yeah, well, do you still have the box for it? No, hell no. Okay, um, I punted that. And I try to throw everything I can away, so all the boxes, so it's wor- everything we have. Is well, worth the boxes nothing. are nice because you can put the stuff back in the boxes right. and sell it. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know that <laughs> that's she, what I do. She's never gonna let me sell it because she's holding on to this dream. It's really just about her not wanting to admit that it was a uh, right. uh, poor purchase. Well, mm-hmm. why do you even have to say that? It was. Why don't you? Because that's the framing that needs to change in order to get rid of it, right? So you need to tell her it was a great purchase. It's just not all great purchases get used. We have to get rid of it. And it's a, maybe it's a great purchase for somebody else. Yeah, it's, it's a great purchase. Family. It is, but it no. just doesn't fit in. We're too busy. We're too busy of a family unless you want to take it with you on all the adventures you go on. Leave it in the car. Yeah, you could have brought it on your camping adventure. Yeah, we could have <laughs> set it up in the field. And, uh, <laughs> no, one, no, one, no one cares. No, we would have pushed it in the river. Also, then she brings up a semi-valid point of like, what about all the other garbage? You're in the, uh, your uh, French witch telescope, what else? And then I was just sort of like going in there inventory and like, well, this box. And she's like, well, that's yours. And I'm like, oh, throw okay. it out. I know. Well, then so here's how you do it. You have to take it over. Whose trash gets thrown over? I'm so lazy. No, I'm you have to go lazy. one for one. So you you throw the witch in there, and then she picks a box of yours and throws it in. Then you pick up the telescope, you throw it in there, <laughs> yeah. and then she picks up a box of yours and throws it. But look, you're getting rid of stuff. It's true, but it all comes down to this Judgment Day of throwing out stuff. Is when are we doing Judgment Day? Day? When is let's do it? It's like a big. There's going to be a big fight, and then I and then involves Make it like a family thing. So yes. Even the kids have to pick up no, things they want to. They're mad, they want they're bitching, this everybody's bitching. This is the worst bitching. hoarder ever, because everybody's a hoarder. Yeah. It's the worst. <laughs> I've never I'm seen a hoarder. Get rid of everything. You are. I are a hoarder. Get, I was about You're to a hoarder. Call. You go along with it. I was about to put on the BDM and like, take my plants, all of them. Oh, I'm done with it. Oh, he's freaking out, man. I'm done. Take my money. <laughs> he's I'm freaking done. out, man. You're done with your plants? <laughs> Baby, because I don't have time to water them. I'm done. Oh, get the hell out of here. I think it's crazy that you would look at a trash telescope and then freak out and want to throw away all your plants. That's a weird reaction. Hold on. Concrete Toad said that you tried to give him old leftover fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tried. I tried. I tried, right? He's trying. You know what? That's I, proof uh, that he was trying. Yeah, yeah. That's That's leftover good. fireworks. Oh, this guy. Well, we, yeah, we don't. Because then all the small stuff, I'm like, let's get this going. Let's get over with. Yeah, and then right. I don't want to introduce the small stuff again. Yeah, the it, kids are out there playing with the tanks too long. <laughs> yeah, we don't yeah. get to do the mortars. Then we get too drunk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So then I, I bag up all the leftovers you know, for Toad's next year. on your side. If I hadn't heard that, I would have thought you're not taking this seriously but now that i know you're trying to give away your old stinky fireworks to the toad <laughs> i feel better we got to get this stuff out of here so tell us go I'll i try to give away everything what if would crystal not let me buy it well she i'm telling put it on my balcony she still thinks that they're gonna th- use this it. is gonna be this is gonna happen what else is in there give me some more things that are in there that are unusable oh god Bikes? I, now i got i got a bunch of uh camping equipment that we tried to give away to our friends. Nobody wanted it because it's old. It was like the old camper equipment from 11 years throw ago. Throw it away. We did. I threw a tent away. Well, I felt bad, but I threw it away. It's good. It had like, holes in you it. You could have it to a homeless person. Well, it had holes in it, and I don't want homeless people tent, uh, tent camping in Orlando. Yeah. So, you know, attractive okay. nuisance. I'll get, attractive nuisance. I'll get that stuff to Goodwill, but then you I got... You want that? You want okay. homeless people? Okay. I'd rather them have some shelter than not. Not if it's <laughs> in your front yard, you wouldn't. If they, you look out there... They're not going to be in my front yard. You don't know that. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you one thing. They're crazy, Sam. I have some sort of old table sewing machine that my homeless people could use. That well, that my wife wanted from my, my pop up had in his house, and the only thing like it, after he passed away, like everybody was like, "Hey, I told the family, and the the family lived nearby." I'm like, I "Hey, want take Crystal to have the sewing machine." No, I said, "Take whatever you want," and then uh, then Crystal's like, "Can I have this uh, table sewing machine?" And I wanted Can to I be have like, this "No, old you can't." Broken. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was like after my pop up died. Boundaries, man. Well, it was like you know I didn't want to tell her no because she was sad. I was sad. I was just like, yeah, you could have it. When so I die, I, my ghost will go into this sewing machine. So I put it into the store, the business store. Don't. Unit. And then, that's mine. <laughs> get that ass out of there. Well, I, I did get it out of there, but I put it. I in don't there. want it in there. It was in there Haunted. for th- for three years, and then I took it out. Three years. Yeah. Then I took it out, and now it's in my garage, and it's like some. Uh, 1920s oh, old. Oh, God. And then the the, the, the sewing Isn't machine the is like... Hit- comes out yes, of- yeah, yeah, I've seen that. My grandma had one of those. Guess yes, what? They're yeah. useless. Yes, I know. And then I have it there, and then I am I want to... Put the witch in front of it. <laughs> I'm like, why do we... And, my, and she has some sentimental... Why is your wife collecting old Little House on the Prairie garbage? 
But then she, she's gonna open an antique store. Like I have, I have two gigantic toolboxes that were my dad's. Give me that. Um, and that's money. That's all money in there, buddy. No, but it's from the '80s, so they're like not worth it anymore. It's just but, wrenches with mustaches. It's but fine. <laughs> I don't need. I don't even use the, the the all the tools inside. They stink like some dude who <laughs> like. Oh, they, you gotta reshellac them. They turn into uh, mm-hmm. like they, yeah, they, they get they sticky start, and they stink. Yeah, <laughs> they I start, had to do that with Trav's <laughs> uncle's tools. They start no. smearing like period <laughs> panties. <laughs> it's gross. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a period panties. Yeah, it's like iron yeah. mixed with some sort of fish. Yeah, it's fish. It's like whose gums are bleeding? It's like someone's gums are bleeding in here. <laughs> what? What are these? I don't know. And anyway, fish. It's old shellac. So yeah. I can. Old shellac. It sounds fancy. It's old shellac. <laughs> I can get rid of that, but they're heavy. Oh my God, they're heavy. And then, <laughs> then also, it's like ah, they're with my dad's. I feel like I kind of want to. So, Hold on a second. Um, there yeah, it yeah. is. That's as good as you'll get. But they're pushed up against the wall. No, but we got it. Did you see that? He goes, ah, but there's a part of me that says, those are my dads, and I don't want to get rid of them. That's as good as it gets, guys, but it's there. Yeah. It's there. So then, but then there's a bunch of stuff in the middle, and then I got a bunch What's of stuff. What's in the middle? Hold on. <laughs> you know, I got to go through it. Porter bags. You got a whole <laughs> big thing of really <laughs> filthy porter, the dirty ones, right? <laughs> You got a whole Tupperware full of dirty men. It's it's probably what uh, most dads go through. They just their garage gets hoarded up, and then with a bunch of bric-a-brac and old stuff. And stu- I don't do that. No, I know. I know. But you're good about. I feel. I bad. just clean it up. Like I just you know as I go. Here's what Sam you, doesn't do. You that. could throw Your garage other than the grift truck. My husband is OCD yeah. organized, so he's got everything. I bet it looks good. Away. I bet Whistling Toothpicks got a nice garage. Garage off. A lot of it is I laziness. S- well, we've been. been Busy lately, yeah. so it's not no, no, immaculate. When the, when but, the uh, truck's out, yeah. when he gets it back to the whistling, when he gets it back, like, pure whistling. I also feel bad about throwing away like uh, useful things. Then you um, donate. And you just got to make the time. There's certain things like I, I told enjoy you. throwing away <laughs> useful things and knowing that they're not going to be used by people like, I hate. We had two kid high chairs for Max and Tommy that were in the, the business storage unit for the longest time. You for business mother. baby. Yeah. And this guy's <laughs> using that storage unit. I was on Personal fi- use. 50% of my money I'm going to that. that. He's got an old You're haunted, paying for his hoarding. He's got a haunted sewing machine in there. So I took Was to, anything from the business in there? Was it just they, your they, personal? There's a small one. No. There's, that's not, there's like two bad. Oh, that's now in here taking a spin. A couple of Stinky, stinky old banner or When's something. When's old Chef BDM coming to get those? So, yeah, he's gonna Who, Chef Ed's taking weeks. those? Different chef. Uh, anyway. We have um, a lot of chefs. Yeah. I, uh, I took the damn high chairs to Goodwill, and they're like, we don't take these. So then I took them back. And Why take them back? If Goodwill takes... If I, I felt like any, someone could use, then I had to put them on the BDM no, it's page. and, and I, had to get a, I had to get a BDM. The, he, a BDM finally took them, but it took that BDM he threw six away. days. He threw them away. Probably. I saw on the BDM page. He's like, we tried to use them. They're garbage. He punted them in the trash. Just curb alerted. It. Put it on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, you know. It, but that it involves some sort of like you you have to put it to the curb, then you have to curb alert. And well, like, that's shorter than going all the way to Goodwill and back. I know. There should be a parking lot in Orlando. You bring a bunch of garbage to. That you can, if you have things that are not quite garbage, that you can go to the parking lot. Not a flea market. I'm not saying it's not unmanned. It's unmanned. And you drive to the thing, and there's little... Take what you want. Yeah, and there's little painted squares, and you set all your stuff in the square. Not that it matters, but just for some organization. And you put all your stuff in there, and it's like, look... And then at the end of the day, if nobody takes that they stuff... They bulldoze it all. They bulldoze it, it all. Okay. It's, there, but there should be something like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, that's called Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but you wouldn't have to, like, monitor it. You see what I'm saying? Like, Craigslist, yeah, yeah. like, you have to monitor it and answer the people... But you could also, if you say free for pickup, take a picture, put it on Craigslist, put it out in your front yard, someone will take yeah. it. Like, oh, uh, Ghost of Manubul said, I tried to donate a TV to the Goodwill, and they wouldn't take it. They told me too many people, <clears throat> Tom, would donate broken TVs as a way to get rid of them. That was 100% what I was trying to do, so I left the TV <laughs> behind a burned out Well, you're the reason they <laughs> will take stuff, Ghost. Uh, you know, they'll take some, like, your garbage men will surprisingly take a lot if oh, you yeah. put it out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And also, if anything's made of metal, the scrappers will take. Yes. Yeah. Like, basically, they won't they take never, car never batteries. Burden. They won't take uh, Tupperware no. filled with uh, car oil or motorcycle oil. Yeah, I yeah. try to, once a year, I try to put a car battery with some oil <laughs> in my trash and they find it. Although, the. How do they find it, Tom? There's some giant magnet or like uh, some device because car batteries were like killing the environment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, That's what I've heard. <laughs> I've never seen proof of it, but it, I've heard it. It was like uh, leaking uh, yeah. stuff into our aquifer, so they have to put in like safety mechanisms so people don't throw What's away What's an aquifer? Yeah, yeah, there's uh, a joke. There, so. <laughs> anyway, uh, bye bye. 
Welcome to A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I am Dan, our producer. Samantha is here. Hello, Samantha. Hello. Would you prefer to be called Sam or Samantha? Either or is fine. Sometimes I feel like if I say Sam, that's like not, it's like disrespectful. I think I can but say But then because you guys are shortened your names to Tom and Dan, then you say Samantha, then it seems too long, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. It should be Tom, Dan, Sam. Yeah. Or why don't we go One Thomas, syllable. Daniel, and Samantha? Woo. That's Damn. a mouthful. Change okay. it all. <laughs> Thomas Chisholm. <laughs> Danny Lee, <laughs> Samantha Ann. <laughs> okay, all right. Southern. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, we're right. Southern. 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 <laughs> Southern. Yeah. Thomas Chisholm thinks he's an Indian. Danny Lee, ooh, racist. Samantha <laughs> Ann, like a good good cook. Listen, there's a some, good cook. <laughs> trashy, trashy. <laughs> there's some money in going full blown south. I got the truck for it. Right? Full <laughs> south? Yeah, yeah, Taylor yeah, Hayes south. will fight us I, if we do that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Tater Hayes. Come on, how can you forget? From that radio station out in Brevard? No. No, it's like Polk. Or Polk. Yeah, Grady Judd Station. Anyway, we have a very special guest here. Um, Uh, Being in here and not being via Zoom, it's a little bit weird. We haven't seen this guy in about, I want to say like two years. Yeah, we just talked about it on Twitch. It's been over two years. Yeah, he was one of our very first quarantine cribs. One of the ones they liked the best. Really? Because uh, it had him, it had his wife, his plants. It was a, He had a lot going on. He planned out a lot. Yeah, people still talk about that. They're like, oh yeah, it was cool to see him in his house and everything. Ladies and gentlemen, the official storyteller of the Orange County Sheriff's Department. It is our very good friend, John Bustecker. Hey, hey, how are you guys? It has been a while. And yeah. I think you should have asked Samantha on the first day if she wants to be called Samantha. They don't Sam. ask me. <laughs> no, no, no. We work these things out like yeah. when we feel them. Yeah. <laughs> when we feel them. I go back and forth, too, uh, with Sam's name because I will say Samantha. And then I'll be like, what have I been calling her? <laughs> What's her name? Is that her name? I'm not, I'm is not it your, Sabrina? What if Savannah? I didn't know? No. Oh, because I'll think like, have I said Sam before? I'm pretty sure I have. Why? But then if I say it, I maybe she'd be like, "Why'd you say that? You're a weirdo." Why are Man, most you think way too hard into things, <laughs> or doesn't think way too not into things? Why are most women on this radio station their names start with an S? And it's three syllables. What radio station? <laughs> <laughs> We're in your house. That was the, that was the correct answer. <laughs> uh, uh, how you that doing, Bustacker? I'm, I'm great. I'm glad to be back. I, I, I had a good time on the Zoom one, but I think it cut out last time, so I like being here in person. Um, we yeah. like to have you in, too. Yeah. The Zoom, you've done a, a decent amount of Zoom in over yeah, the pandemic. Yeah, I don't love it, though. Me it's, I mean, you can do it right, but it's still different than actually talking to somebody. Yeah, even done correctly, I have found that Zoom still kind of stinks, you know? Like we're lucky that we get to zoom in with comedians or, or voiceover artists or people that we have in here, and it's great. But I feel, and tell me if you feel this, and, and you too, Bus, that I feel like I have to do a lot more. It's a lot harder. You you have to pay attention to every nuance. You have to be looking at their face, yeah, to kind of see what they're saying. It's hard. He, the biggest problem with video. Uh, and not really with your cell phone, but more of with our setup, with the fact that there's a camera. Um, and it, this happens with uh, your laptop, too, but not as much because the camera's basically at eye level. Mm-hmm. Is it when you're looking at the person, and it happens with us, if I'm looking at the person on our screen, I'm not looking in their eyes. Well, because every- I'd have to look at the camera to look in their eyes, and it's weird to look in a camera and not at the person. Yeah. But, but, you so are, but you are looking at the person. I tell this all the time to the people that I do Zooms with, like, when you stare at the camera, you're looking at the camera, and you're like, but I'm too dumb. I can't. <laughs> I'm <laughs> looking at a black square. Too dumb. <laughs> okay, I, that's not the person. Like, you're not the face. person. You don't have a face. <laughs> you only have one eyeball. I'm not. You're not tricking me, you idiot. You're not Daniel. There's Daniel. I see him. He's littler than you. I got, yeah. See. But there's definitely a benefit because I'm sure you can do interviews, uh, video interviews with people who could never make it into your studio because they're, you know, they're in California, they're in sure. New York, or wherever. We, we got made, Travis. That's it. We did. Uh, we, and now no. he won't. He won't write me back. No, yeah, we got yeah. more. We got Travis Pastrana. We got we uh, got Les Stroud. We would have never gotten that one if it hadn't have been for Zoom. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because it, it was easy for him. He did it from like a cabin or something, or in his at his office. He's yeah. like, let me call these idiots. Yeah, Bob Saget, no Zoom, <laughs> over yeah, a phone, no and Zoom. somehow uh, well, that's because made he, more news. He didn't want us to see all the contusions on his. <laughs> <No>. uh, <laughs> Come on, yeah. at some point, hey, yeah, at yeah. some point. 
Yeah, I you're think right. Would, I think it's always too soon on this show, right? Because we killed him. Yeah. Uh-huh. We're all never talk about it. She did it, too. I sure hope I make it out alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll you made a mistake. You, you made we'll a mistake, see. <laughs> We'll see. I'm right on time. Tall, skinny. <laughs> no, you look a lot like Bob. <laughs> no. I don't know. So, Bussecker, uh, how has work been since uh, the pandemic? It's Is been it- fine for me. I mean, I stay really, really busy with, with, with the Zoom stuff. We do all kinds of Zoom stuff at the sheriff's office now. Are and, you the Zoom man? Uh, I set up a lot of it because we do a lot of are interviews. Are you IT now? Uh, technical IT. Oh, when it comes yeah. to like, get the nerd. Stuff. He knows how to do yeah, 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 yeah. But what I wanted to say wasn't get, to make fun of him. I wanted to actually, now I want to hug him and say, oh my god, I'm so sorry because yeah. that's a lot of... <laughs> Wow, what a it's, work! A, it's lot, a of lot of work. work. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of trial and error too. Because I, I have to, to learn. do that here, and we don't we don't do a ton of zooming, but that that we do is hard, and I hate it. Yeah, and we run it through professional cameras, sure. and we have stream boxes and mm. audio and mics. Yeah, and he got the real setup, all we- kinds of stuff. But it's been trial and error for me because I had to learn like lighting and and making it look right and sound right. But it, it it looks a lot better than just doing it on your computer. Yeah, for sure. Have you told the story about ha- has the masks that all of society been has been wearing for the past two years uh-huh. ha- has that complicated police work in any way? Because it feels That's like a great it, question. It feels like it should. No one will give us a straight but it answer. It doesn't seem like it seems like more robberies would happen. My father like, told you know me. What I'm wore, my father told logic. me if I pulled my socking cap over my head and walked into a bank, they would shoot me dead. <laughs> <laughs> my dad told the me. The old yeah. man security guard. My would dad kill told you. me they would shoot me dead. But it's like it seems like just. Society wearing masks would complicate police work. I mean, it's a legitimate question. I I really don't know the answer. Like, (laughs) I mean, if I was going to go rob a bank and I had my mask on, normally if I had a mask on five years ago, you know I'm probably going to rob the bank. Yeah, yeah, but now you're a dumb doctor. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Look at that or a convenience sh- store. Like I just and the fact that I now mean, there's other ways to catch criminals than what they look like, fingerprints and DNA and all that. I, I know, but I'm just saying, like normally, because now there's video cameras everywhere. There's one in every ATM and something. I've seen the shows. Like they're like, oh, he walked by this ATM. We see his face. Now everybody's got masks on. Although. I think criminals uh, anti-mask like, they don't like them. <laughs> and I feel like as you were talking, I'm sitting there thinking about the people. You know, I think they're going to be like, "Nah, screw this mask." And then they'll be like, "There yeah. he is." It's like going to be the one guy that walks in without a mask. You're like, "He's here to rob us." <laughs> He's got the no mask. Get him. Anyway, uh, the answer is I don't think it has, which is confusing to me because it seems well, like it should be a big mess it's for like the Uber. cops, it's but like it people, hasn't been. It's like people ask me, "Do you think Uber has lowered the DUI?" rate and i go well i would hope so but i can't tell <laughs> i'm well, no, sure it hasn't right i don't I am, think it has i have no <laughs> yeah, answer for you. the mask thing i got nothing it i got should've. nothing for nothing <laughs> it <laughs> should have just so you know any question you ask me i will give you the answer i have been told but i got nothing on it there's no value to it there's no i, I don't even believe it there's no evidence that i'm I only telling you what i've been told but yeah, i do yeah. not believe it so, uh, what are some other stories that are have been big? Like, wh- what's your last huge viral video that uh, got a so, million? No, God, I, no, I saw your steak. I saw something My completely steak? unrelated. Bus to oh, steak. No, Bus Deckers. <laughs> he did a piece on this little cheesesteak spot. Oh, that was a long time. But I no, it just popped ago. up yesterday. Oh, okay. I swear to God, the algorithm back. got yeah. me because no, it's like Cheesesteak City. That's and I'm like, like Mr. Pat's. Art, yeah. Yeah. Art, art, yeah. Yeah. art sandwiches. Yes. So, no, I used to do all these videos about Orlando. I, like I, don't, I don't have as much time as I used yeah. to. I wish I could still do that. But yeah, that was a fun, fun that one was that a I great. Did. That's a great... I liked... When I, know. I Okay, this is a hot take. It's Hot Take Wednesday. I like softer... Friendlier bus decker, better than busting criminals. Bus decker, you're a little, <laughs> I don't bust you're any a little, criminal. your hands are rough now. You're a little more, ra- <laughs> you're a little, you're not as sweet. You I know? like the sweeter bus decker. Uh, oh, you're, you're hitting little, those hard streets. Yeah, well, yeah. look, he's beefier now. He's like I a have, little more. I have, I've actually gone out a lot more. You're with, more uh, muscly with our deputies. I like, don't like ride alongs and stuff. Oh, oh, they, they, oh, yeah, yeah. They let you have a gun, like no, a tiny gun. No, 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 no. He's on the bug now. No. But I did, I, you know, I go out just to kind of see what they do as like their normal job because I work at like headquarters. So what's what a they normal call, day? So the, uh, recently I was with Sector 5, which is around. Oh, that's internet. where they all got the alien arm. I've seen that. <laughs> I've seen that. No, like, I've seen, oh, yeah, the, just oh, go into your neck. 
I wonder if he gets does it go down there? Does he get a <laughs> oh, right, tiny goes. tentacle? Square. But uh, it's uh, it's where I drive is. That's like sector five. Oh, oh. so it's the tourist so cops. They the, don't do nothing. The, they just oh, ride they around do. on bikes. No, they do ride up on bikes. <laughs> and so I actually got to ride on bikes with them. You rode bikes went on a bike yeah. ride. Yeah. You yeah. rode bikes with sector five. What yeah. kind of crime are you busting over there? Uh, there's I'm drugs and guns and you know just like anywhere else. Drugs really. and guns and whores. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the third one. But isn't it just a bunch of mint- sector five's a rough place? You have no business there. <laughs> like everybody, uh, that, like a down eye drive and it hangs out. It's like mid- it's called sector five, Tom. It's not <laughs> middle America. It's like Midwest white trash and yeah. then what? The British like, people. And then, uh, yeah, then British people. Florida yeah. trash trying to scam the Midwest yeah. white trash. Yeah. And it's, uh, British people. Look at that orange. <laughs> Look at that orange. <laughs> Yes. You know, we we went around and just kind of patrolled things and made sure everything was all right. And so, did you, know, you like bust some criminals? There was one at the very end of the night that they uh, they stopped them, and we were actually stopping another car. And uh, they would you they, pull him over for? The, uh, he had no bumper at all, like no no <laughs> bumper. <laughs> 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 yeah, which yeah. meant which that's meant, illegal. <laughs> no, which I don't think he had a right, ta- no, right, no, no tag, tag yeah. either. Oh, like okay. just like nothing. Oh, on yes, his car. Well, you guys are idiots because his bumper fell. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you gotta tape your tag to your tail. But as they were stopping him, somebody else called for help because they were they were they they started fighting like the. Re- the oh my god, boss! You know, it was it was a wild thing because we could hear on the radio like I need help, I need help, I need help, and so we had to leave that guy and go. Oh, oh that that yeah. is the lottery of no bumpers <laughs> <laughs> because I've seen that happen before. The and that's happening to me. Got a joint in his console Don't burning in his bumper, and then they're like, "We gotta go." And he's like, "Oh yeah. my <laughs> god, you just have to evacuate your pants right with now." Bo cops, remember they're like, "We're about to go to jail." And oh, that yeah. was man up. And then the, when the, then the big cop has to go chase the other guy, you're like, "That guy's." So Saved our ass. We were we were getting our boat was boarded and we were going through the whole thing and we both knew we were going to jail. And then a a red sparkle bass boat with yeah. a guy with a mullet and his stereo so loud he couldn't hear the cop goes flying by into the manatee the zone, manatee zone mm. and man, me and Tom got the biggest. Uh, we were so happy. We were, yeah. That's the uh, equivalent of winning lottery. And the cop goes so loud. He yells at him. Like, he's like, he can't hear me. He's like, you guys got lucky today on Dozen's Road. Gets <laughs> yeah. the boat, takes off after that guy. We're yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, but probably the biggest one recently. I, I don't think I talked about this because I haven't been on here in a no. while. Is the is the theft of Bugsy the French Bulldog? <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear about this? No. So Bugsy the Bugs- French okay, Bulldog. So this guy in uh, West Orange County, he was walking his French Bulldog. This was back in March of last year. Oh, wow. Just going for a walk. It took and- you a year to crack this No, no, no. no. Actually, it, it did take six months, though. And so they were walking around. He was walking around the block, and these two people stopped, and they pulled out their guns, and they said, we want your dog. Yeah. They and did so- like the Lady Gaga thing. Yeah. It was like that same week as well. So, so this they- was happening peak pandemic because dogs were so sought after, right? They were yeah. so valuable. That people are actually robbing people. I need something to pet while this virus kills (laughs) my friend. Yeah. yeah. So this dog. So this dog was like a twenty five hundred dollar dog, and so the guy. The guy was the nicest guy too, and so he gets his dog stolen. This is terrible. Yeah. yeah. So he gets his dog stolen. So our deputies kind of. Uh, look into it. They interview him. They they say, you know, we'll do the best we can, but it's hard to track down dogs because, uh, you know, if they have chips in them, they, they don't always get scanned, and so they were and like... And they will cut them out. Yeah, and yeah. so that's what ended yeah. up happening. So after they did all this investigation, one of our detectives found out that they were... Uh, some dogs were being taken to this other guy in East Orange County who was cutting out the microchips so the dogs could never be tracked. But luckily, yeah. this this particular <laughs> one... Uh, they never cut his microchip out, and so they did find him, and they reunited it with the owner like six months later. Wow. It was wild. I wonder if it, the it, like, mm. like if the dog is kind of like, what if the dog doesn't like you now? <laughs> <laughs> what what if, if he's like, <clears throat> I like the chop shop, or where? No, like, no. I, I, what if he's like, I have always wanted to run with a gang, and I was <laughs> in a gang, and now you're putting me back this boring old man. This guy said he was a little skittish at first, the dog, when he came back, but he's he's back home now. Oh, Yeah. It's also, a there, good ha- story. there had to have been a couple cops that were like, I'm not uh, chasing after some stupid dog. <laughs> like, you know, it's an animal. <laughs> They're like, I got it to police work to solve serious crimes. I kind of feel like I want a couple of those there just to even out the ones that are like, I want to do it. I want to do it. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Well, the guy who said, he's like, you know, I have a dog and I see how bad they treat these dogs. So I want to like 
fix it. I don't want this to happen to anybody else's dogs. Plus, yeah, they yeah. were robbing people with guns, and so like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. it could have went way, way, way worse. It, um, it it's crazy. The dogs are so sought after. Is it still that bad, or is it like you can't find a dog in the pound? Because there was a while where like pounds are empty. <laughs> like it was <laughs> well, no, weird it's, that it's a, a special dog though. That's why. I mean, yeah, it's a yeah, yeah. Dog. No, yeah, I know. Very... All the lumpy ones are still in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, I yeah. ain't shooting nobody for a lumpy dog. <laughs> but there was a like you, for all, the longest time we're like, hey, adopt from. From the pound, get you know, get yeah. from a rescue or whatever. And there was a kid- time they're all rescue. It was like when the Venice, uh, the canals were cleaned. You yeah. know, you see the fish. It's like, oh my god! Like, like we stopped and we like this it. happened. We and saved the- all the dogs. Like, like, all the we dogs were-, were saved. I said that to me. I was like, look, we saved all the dogs. And like, we were looking at them. But Even it's back. The- they returned. And it gave confidence to a lot of really hideous dogs. You know, like a <laughs> lot of really yeah, horrible yeah. dogs were like, hey, I must not be that bad. I got adopted like real fast. Oh. It was like three days. I got adopted. My mom and sister got a bite crazy one. Oh, my <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Girl, they they would have never. Nobody would have ever adopted this yeah. bite. Who wants a bite? He's a biting machine, and, <laughs> and uh, now he's got a home. And uh, yeah, he takes on some secondhand smoke. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, well, that calms him down. <laughs> like if a dog is biting you, it is proven that if you can poof like Parliament bees. Light One Hundreds into its face, that it will actually calm the savage beast. <laughs> we had another case, like right around that time, that it was a twenty-five-year-old cold case that they say that they uh, solved. Wow! It was a murder at a, a convenience store up in northwest Orange County. Guy was stabbed like 75 times, 79 times. Oh my god, times. wow. And at the time, they didn't know who did it because they just didn't have the technology to look right. through DNA. Uh, but they did have blood samples, and there was blood all over the oh, convenience store. Sure, 70. And uh, the guy didn't really have much family around here, and so uh, nobody, I mean, his friends cared, but he just didn't have like a, like a mo- his mom and dad weren't alive anymore. God, that's sad. And so they, they eventually solved it after 25 years because technology sort of caught up with the blood samples and the DNA. And it's the guy, a lot lately. Yeah, and the guy who they caught, he was living up in Eustis and just sort of living a normal life. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say normal life. I uh, think he was like a construction worker. But was and- he like... D- I'm always fascinated by these cold cases that are extremely cold because they come and they get the dude and he might have like a family. He's walking out like a, he's a normal guy. Yeah, he's yeah. already been like, I'm, no one's catching me. Or maybe the craziest ones are the ones where they have no recollection of even doing it. Ah, uh, Oh, yeah. They convince or, themselves that yeah, it's not or, even real. And, and or I something. believe that. Yeah, I believe you could compartmentalize something yeah. See, to the point so where you don't had, think you did it. This guy had been stabbed so many times that they, what they figured was the person who did the stabbing the the suspect he had probably nicked himself at some point yeah, so there was blood uh, other other blood at the at the scene and so they could test that blood and they found the guy as they said up in Eustis and the the way they sort of matched the DNA they had to like go through his family tree oh was it through could, like twenty three of me yeah, yeah so listen they, had, they that's could why I don't know that. That. if they I violently stab <laughs> someone I'm never doing ancestry well, no, it, it, was, you know, it doesn't matter no. it could be anyone oh, in their family oh yeah yeah, yeah. And so what they could do is say oh okay God, like, I gotta call everybody <laughs> don't do it yeah yeah you'll also find out about safe if we don't. You can yeah. also find out secret sibling- siblings that way. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so they, they sort of narrowed it down like it had to be one of three siblings and so they could rule out two. So they sort of focused on one and then they had to get his DNA and so the way they did Wait that was... Wait for him to throw a cigarette out the door. He threw, he <laughs> yeah. threw six or seven beer cans out at a, at a gas station and at that point it's public property if you throw it out and so they tested it and they, they matched his DNA. Wow, oh, what kind of beer? I think it was Budweiser. It was yeah. Budweiser. Yeah. It was Budweiser. Yeah. The, there you go. Oh. See, I thought you were about to tell me, because this happens a lot, where they solve a cold case, and then the guy's already serving life in prison, and no. it was just like, that, it, it's like less satisfying to me, yeah. because I'm like, well, he's already in prison for life, right. like, uh, yeah, I know that they're bringing some closure to the family yeah. and stuff, but it's not really justice, because the guy's never getting out, so yeah. it was kind of like, oh, I'm this, boy, guy, this, this guy, guy was, no, yeah. he was out. Yeah, no, it was like, was you, you murdered someone violently, you don't need to be in society, because of, like, that guy obviously is insane, and who knows if he can, you know, for, if he did it one time. five years, he went about his life. Pretty much. Crazy. Yeah, it was like 1990, 1991. 96. 96, yeah. okay. Nuts. That is absolutely crazy. And imagine you're sitting there, you know, like, I like the ones where it's like they've taken on a role of something like, they're a pastor at a church mm-hmm. with oh, a new yeah. family. And or next a thing cop, you know, sometimes. they come and get him, and yeah. this guy rapes yeah, somebody. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, how did he do that? 
And it's like, what made the person even go back and look? Because I'm sure there's tons of cold so cases. So there are. I, what it is, generally when our detectives go look at cases, it's they, they sort of see what they have. So if, if it's from, you know, 80, 90, 100 years ago, they probably don't have a lot of things. But when you start getting closer to sort of the present, you might have a lot of blood samples. You might have, have something. That you couldn't test before. That, yeah, you yeah. couldn't test it before. But as I said, like te- as technology changes, like you can retest oh my the God. things. It's like video game quests. If if your character isn't powerful enough, mm-hmm. you don't do it. You don't do the side quest. You wait and you level up a little bit more te- till the technology gets good, yeah. and then you go back and start chipping at the ones you can't. That's crazy cool, man. It isn't the, our cold cases public file? Like, can you go back and look at because there? I think they're always technically open cases. I, I'm I'm not an expert on this. I would but, imagine if they're open, you can't. Yeah, and that's what yeah. I mean. If they're open, if they're open, okay. you can't. There well, might be some parts of it that you can. Initial police reports; right. those are usually public record. But like, really fine details because what they don't want to happen is, let's say you're the murderer. Well, which, I was going to be <laughs> Sam well, could probably solve a lot of these. On just give her some evidence. Well, well, if anybody <laughs> here, if anybody here know. would be a murderer, uh-huh. it's either going to be Tom or Sam. Okay. <laughs> oh, why me? Hey, well, Tom, uh, I'll never get away. That's with what the murderer would say. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Uh, knows he's a cop. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he's not a cop. <laughs> he's not a cop. I'm not, he's I'm he's not. like my in laws uh, like their steak. He's like not. Enough. He's a cop. Got, yeah. He's like a reporter plus. <laughs> yeah, but he's no, a reporter. But plus. there might be some things in that file that only the murderer would know, and so you don't want to release all that stuff because yeah, yeah, if, yeah. if you know maybe they know what what kind of gun it was or, or if there was something special about a and knife or some something. people like to claim that they did yeah, things yeah. that they did not do yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and so. then it gums up the whole system and then the next thing you know people are um you know confessing to crimes <laughs> that they had nothing to do with people are all they're the insane, time. insane all people the time. have do you that. ever confessed to doing something you didn't <laughs> no. do <laughs> it never even either. dawned on me to do that but <laughs> i was like that was that's the, the last thing i ever thought of yeah <laughs> i never thought of like hey i'm gonna confess this murder <laughs> For fun, <laughs> like what? I don't what know. I kind of get off on him every night when Andrea comes home from work. I look at her. I I just tell her a new lie every day. I'm like, I burned all your clothing. And she's like, You did? I'm like, No, I didn't. I didn't do um, uh, well, I was just gonna yeah, say just because keeps on her toes. They there's a lot of like internet detectives that end up like finding new evidence and presenting it to like local uh, law enforcement mm-hmm. about certain crimes that were committed. That actually, yeah, I've seen because they have the time. I see them in documentaries. Although I'm sure if you talk to police officers, they'd be like, "Please don't do this. <laughs> like, stop sending us garbage or from crazy people." Because it's like one documentary comes out and like these internet sleuths uh, just, just like solve the crime. Well, like that cat but they're thing. like, no, that, that's one in a million. It was like that one documentary about the lady or the guy who killed the cat. Don't f with cats. Yeah, yeah oh, it was yeah, that. Yeah. That was the one that. And then there were people that started just like influencer became a new job. Then like internet sleuth became like a new job that people were gonna like. I'm gonna quit my job and now I'm gonna be like this like keyboard. Well, they start doxing people that have yeah. nothing to do with the case, and then people either get hurt or hurt themselves. Do you have to deal with of... any of that around here? I don't, but I'm sure there is. Some, I mean, there's some higher profile cases that have happened in well, the last oh, you know, yeah. 20 years here. Well, speaking of higher profile, I've saw like th- th- so many people on the internet make comments about like Bob Saget and how like the uh, police should be investigating this and then all I can think about is like I'm sure they did. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'm sure they, you know, someone within uh, the, the uh, police uh, department Somebody needs to call the police. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, did their due diligence and looked into it, especially because it's such a high profile case. They probably wanted to make sure all their T's were you know that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm just making the assumption. Now that all that sometimes doesn't happen, but in this particular case, I think they looked into it. Yeah, and they didn't find any foul play or whatever before. You know, uh, but people are like convinced. They're like, "This is uh, why aren't they looking into this?" Like, this is although it seems weird. It's just like I'm sure the cops. Looked into it. I mean, they said the door was locked. There was no struggle. There was no yeah. blood. I mean, the medical examiner did his job, and that's not, <laughs> yeah. that's not under the sheriff's office. That's under the county. Yeah. But I tell people like like I don't know every single detail. I mean, I followed it as much as everybody else did. But I say like you know, believe it or not, people die all the time. They're just not famous, and and they die for a lot of reasons. Yeah. I mean, people, and some are mysterious, and they're yeah. like, well, that doesn't make any sense. I never heard of that. It, it doesn't like, mean yeah, you never heard a, a lot of things. It doesn't mean right. it was a homicide or there was a murder. It just you know, people die. People have aneurysms. People fall people like 
it happens. You're, yeah. and, and they even die at 65, believe it or not. Right. And yeah. So, like, it, it happens. He just happened to be a celebrity, and it's, you know, it gets a lot of publicity, and it's tragic, but people die. But the internet does push us towards questioning conspiracy, everything. Co- questioning yeah. everything, conspiracy. Well, we're, like, we're taught. We hear the we're taught we that's hear a the good thing and a bad thing, right? We're taught that both you should question everything. Hey, question everything. And then you're taught, like, hey, you know, come on. What are you doing? You're, you're, you're gunking mm. up the system with too many questions. Come on. You know, like, so where is the and it's like people where's are, the balance? It's like people are awesome. Like we see, we're inundated with the most extreme crazy. Oh, you mean the video series? Yes, people are sorry. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, well, it's like you I thought s- you were just getting positive for a second. You're like, no. you know what? People are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but you see a three minute video montage of people doing crazy stunts and unbelievable flips and things that they practiced for ten years and probably tried that trick uh, ten thousand times before they made it. And we see five seconds of a clip of people doing a hundred of those things, yeah. and then it starts to. It like amazing feats start to be diminished, right? Because you're like, well, I would just watch a hundred people do amazing things. So this person doing, you know, why can't everybody do it? You get influenced by that stuff. Sure. You see crazy stories of like murders getting away with things and crazy mysteries that are like, oh wow, that did happen. The Super Bowl did get played twice in the home, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, bowl of the, Wait, the what the home <laughs> team. No, I mean like Tampa. Oh, okay, right. like, anomalies happen, yeah, yeah. and then it. It, it He's makes having us, an episode. You just have to uh, sit through uh, it. Uh, <laughs> it makes us believe that it's going to happen more often than than statistically possible. Sure. Mm. Um, and I'm sure that uh, makes uh, policing harder than it uh, should be because people are like, wait a minute, this is... Uh, a crazy murder or like some sort of conspiracy or whatever. Like everything is some sort of hidden crime. We, yeah, we also want things to be interesting. Yeah, yeah and like, they have. Yeah. I mean, crazy stuff happens all yeah, the time. Does. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And 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 hopefully that stuff is investigated and they can figure it out. But you know, I, I think in this case, in a lot of cases, it's it, it people die.